Chapter 301 Another Nest The ghost butterfly boomerang made a curve in the air and flew toward the target. Yang Zikuin couldn't help smiling. He could also make the boomerang fly in such a curve. However, it was impossible to hit the bull's eye on the targets in the back with a curve like this. The two targets were so close together that a curve was never steep enough for the boomerang to hit the bull's eye. In a second, the boomerang was already next to the first target, and then it made a sudden turn to circle around the first target and hit the second one. Everybody was shocked. Without remote control, they had never seen a boomerang following such a strange trajectory. Yang Zikuan was also dumbstruck. However, because the target in the front was blocking people's sight, no one could tell where the boomerang hit on the second target. Without a word, Yang Zikuan quickly ran to the targets and pushed the target in the front away, exposing the target in the back. Everybody widened their eyes. The Z-Steel Ghost Butterfly Boomerang was in the exact center of the second target, not even slightly skewed. Yang felt even more shocked and took down the Z-Steel Ghost Butterfly Boomerang, placing it in his hands and watching it closely. It was a delicate but simple design, without any special parts. Obviously, Hansen made the curve completely relying on the shape of the boomerang and his own skills. Yang walked to Hansen with the butterfly boomerang in his hand and said, I am convinced that you have great boomerang skills with this butterfly boomerang. I will listen whatever you say. Hansen smiled and said, It seems that you are not completely convinced and think I have an advantage with this butterfly boomerang. That's okay. I can give this one to you. And whenever you could reach my level, I will take you to Dark Swamp. Yang Zikuan's eyes lit up. Do you mean it? Do I look like a liar? Hansen smiled and said, Rest assured, I will be able to do what you did in a month, Yang Zikuan said confidently. I sincerely wish you success. Looking at Yang Zikuan, Hansen thought to himself, The boy thinks the shape of the boomerang is all it takes. In fact, that was only a part of the reason. Indeed, the ghost butterfly boomerang is very important. But the key still lies in the combination of the yin and yang forces, which I learned from the spinning spear and yin yang blast. Since you have never learned those, it would be impossible for you to reach my level. However, Hansen did not want to ruin Yang Zikuan's confidence. It was a good thing that the young man was diligent, which would also save the special squad a lot of effort to cultivate him. When Yang Zikuan had stayed longer in God's sanctuary, advanced meat would be provided to him. And when he had a better geno point count, it would be less risky for him to go to Dark Swamp. Captain, I did not imagine that you have great skills at Boomerang as well. Yang Monli walked to Han Sen and gave him a rare compliment. Hansen looked at her, pretending to be surprised. Did I hear this right? Are you paying me a compliment? Yang Monli blushed a little and said quickly, I have reported to the management and will soon go to Second God Sanctuary. You will have a new deputy very soon. Thank you for your hard work in the last two years, said Hansen cordially. Yang Monli had taken care of most business of the special squad, especially during the time he went AWOL, for which Hansen owed her gratitude. First God Sanctuary does not deserve too much of your time. You don't belong here, said Yang Monli and left. Hansen knew this meant Yang Monli had recognized him as a leader. Hansen sighed and thought to himself, indeed, I don't belong here. However, there is something I must get in the place. Before getting it, I will not leave. Seeing his previous enemies, friends, opponents, and lover became evolvers one by one, Hansen did not feel that he was slower than anyone else. The reason he squatted was to jump higher. As long as he evolved with his super geno points maxed out, Hansen would definitely do better than everyone else in Second God Sanctuary. The difference in their goals determined how far they could go. The others could not even see where Hansen was going. Since Hansen came back, he had been working hard on Heresy Mantra and Panorama. Unless there was an opportunity to hunt sacred blood creatures, Hansen would not waste any time. Even so, just by joining other hunting campaigns, Hansen had gained another 7 sacred geno points, making his sacred geno point count 73, which was not far from 100. That was not Hansen's end goal. He still only had 19 Super Geno points so far. It had been half a year since Hansen started to feed the Cloud Beast, which had become a Sacred Blood Beast three months ago. It was still evolving and growing. Hansen estimated that he still need another half a year for it to become a Super Creature, which was to say it would take one year for the Black Crystal to turn the creature into a Super One. 
One year was too long for Han's senator, he did not want to wait for more than a decade to evolve, which was why Hansen wanted to hunt super creatures. However, Hansen was still trying to complete the third phase of Heresy Mantra, and he needed time to finish practicing Panorama. It will still take him some time to get ready to face super creatures. When Hansen was about to go back to Black Hawk and practice Panorama and Gladiator, he suddenly heard some astonishing news. Someone discovered a recently exposed nest in the mountains nearby. Chapter 302 Creatures at the Door Hansen was excited to hear the news. Where there was a nest, there was an egg. Maybe he even had a chance at a super beast soul, which was crucial to him at this stage. After learning what had happened, Hansen became more cheerful. It was the Son of Heaven gang that discovered this nest first. However, after Son of Heaven and his henchmen evolved and entered Second God Sanctuary, their gang was not what it used to be. It had become a second-class gang at this point. Currently, the strongest three forces were the Steel Armor Gang, the Fist Gang, and the Disciples. The Steel Armor Gang was backed by the Special Squad and recruited a lot of military school students randomly assigned to the Steel Armor Shelter. Therefore, Steel Armor Gang remained the strongest in the shelter. The Disciples was something established by Yuan and Ching. With many good men on their team, they were only second to the Steel Armor Gang. Many of the leaders of the Fist Gang had also evolved and left. Little Finger was the only one who was managing the gang at this point. With some fresh blood, the gang was still considered top three in the shelter, but it was not as strong as before. Although the Son of Heaven Gang was the first to discover the nest, they did not gain any benefits after entering the nest. Instead, they suffered a great loss. According to the survivors, there were at least a thousand creatures in the nest, some of which were sacred blood creatures. After getting the news, Yang Monli organized the Steel Armor Gang to march toward the nest, and on behalf of the Special Squad, Hansen also brought Gambler and the other two Special Squad members. At this point, the Special Squad was basically constituted of new people, except for Hansen and Gambler. When they reached the nest, the Disciples and the Fist Gang had also arrived. A bunch of people stopped at the center of the Life Lotus, and none dared to enter first. Seeing Hansen, Yuan, Ching, and Little Finger said hi. Brothers, we cannot stand here forever. How about we set some rules? Yuan said with a smile. What kind of rules? Little Finger replied. Since the Fist Gang was the weakest at the moment, he did not want any conflicts. Yuan thought about it and said, How about we do a lucky draw to decide which group shall enter the nest first? It will be all about luck. Agreed, said Little Finger. After some discussion, Yang Manli also agreed with Yuan. After all, the entrance to the nest was so narrow that even a large group like the Steel Armor Gang had to go in one by one. If they were attacked in the middle by the other gangs, it would be a lot of trouble. Since we all agree, let's do this, Hansen shrugged and said. He had heard from the survivors that there were a lot of advanced creatures in the nest, so going in first might not be a good thing. No one had any different opinions. Yuan then suggested Hansen make the lots, to which everyone else agreed. Since they all knew who Hansen was, no one believed he would be playing tricks. To be fair, Hansen who was responsible for making the lots had to draw after everyone else. In the end, the one lot left for Hansen said he should go in the last, after all three other teams. In this case, Hansen had no one to blame but his own luck. According to the result of the draw, Little Finger was supposed to be the first to go. He became very excited and believed that as long as his team was careful, sooner or later they could tackle this nest. Yuan and Ching were quite disappointed, but they could do nothing but watch Little Finger leading his team down the nest. Originally, the other teams thought Little Finger would spend at least hours in the nest. However, their team emerged from the entrance with several people hurt and several people missing. The rest looked at the team in surprise, and Chin asked, Little Finger, what happened? Little Finger cursed, the Sons of Bitch Gang are horrible people. They attracted the attention of God knows how many creatures. A whole lot of mutant creatures and sacred blood creatures are blocking the way. Since it was very narrow, we could only go one at a time, and no one could fight off so many advanced creatures alone, so we had to come back. What bad luck? It is blocked? Let's go and have a look. Yuan did not believe the creatures were so strong that people could not enter. Yuan and Ching's team went back even faster than the Fist Gang. However, they were clearly in better shape. Everyone was back, and they were only slightly injured. 
Damn the sons of bitches. It is completely blocked. We can't even tell how many creatures are inside. And the path is so narrow. Muttered Ching after he came back. Seeing that Yuan and Ching also gave up on entering the nest, Yang Monli was slightly surprised. She picked several strong guys from the Steel Armor Gang to go down with her. The result turned out to be the same. Yang Monli also gave up on the nest. The advanced creatures made it impossible for everybody. If the nest had never been entered before, they could still choose to slowly kill off the creatures. However, at this point thousands of creatures were blocking the path, which meant the first person going down would walk into an ambush. Everybody looked to haunt Senator Hans and had the least people, only three team members and himself. Let's go there and check it out, Hansen smiled and said to Gambler. Gambler and the other teammates nodded and followed Hansen down the nest. After going through the winding path, the special squad soon arrived at the wall of green gold which was already broken. Several Z-Steel shields were put up to block the broken part of the wall. The thick fields were all deformed from attacks, which looked frightening. Through the gaps, they could still see lots of creatures jostling. Many claws had reached out from the gaps. Seeing the four people, all the creatures near the shields started to screech and knock on the shields which were about to be shattered. Chapter 303 Slaughter No wonder none of them went inside. This is goddamn mission impossible. Gambler shook his head after seeing what was behind the wall. Damn those sons of bitches. The two new members at the special squad Zheng Qi and Sho Qing Yu looked frightened as well. Hansen, let's go back now. There is no way we can go farther. We have to wait for the creatures inside to come out, and by then we can kill them slowly. Afterwards, maybe we can find a chance to go in, said Gambler. All right, you guys go back. I can go inside alone, decided Han Sr. Zheng Qi and Sho Qing Yu widened their eyes and said, Captain, that is too dangerous. Hansen smiled and said, Although it is dangerous now, there is a chance to break the egg. After the creatures rushed out, everybody would have a chance at the egg then. Just go back to the entrance, I will take a look inside, and if it doesn't work, I would retreat as well. Hansen, I should go with you. It is too dangerous, Gambler gritted his teeth and said, That's okay, I can do it alone. There are too many creatures inside, and I would be more efficient alone. I'll be back in a while after I break the egg. Hansen then summoned the Sacred Blood Phantom Ant Armor and Three Blade Harpoon. Seeing that Hansen was determined, Gambler did not say anything. However, he insisted on waiting for Hansen at the wall, so that it would be safer for Hansen to come back. Hansen nodded and cut the Z-Steel stick supporting the shields. The shields were immediately pushed away by the fierce creatures. Hansen waved his harpoon and beheaded a creature coming at him, its blood flowing like a stream. Hansen kicked the dead creature in the head, and its body blocked the creatures coming after him, making some space for Hansen to squeeze himself inside. Will Captain be fine? Zheng Qi swallowed and asked. There were so many creatures that even with the protection of sacred blood armor, safety will not be guaranteed. Relax. He is a prudent fellow and would never do something that he is not certain of. Since he dared to go, he could definitely make it. Having spent a lot of time with Hansen, Gambler knew Hansen best. If Gambler did not want to evolve with the sacred Geno points maxed out, he would have gone to Second God Sanctuary a long time ago. In fact, Gambler did not believe too much in his own words. There were simply too many advanced creatures that he saw more than 30 mutant creatures and a sacred blood black spirit at a glance. Gambler was not sure about the level of the creatures he did not recognize, so there might be more sacred blood creatures. Seeing Hansen besieged by sacred blood creatures, Sho Ching Yu said with his voice shaking, it is too risky. Captain did not even know what was going on inside. No one could tell how many sacred blood creatures there were. As they spoke, Hansen had already disappeared in the group of creatures. His team members could only tell their captain was still fighting from the roaring of the creatures. Don't just stand there. There are creatures coming out, fight them off. Gambler exclaimed and slashed his weapon at a creature coming toward the path. The risky situation in others' eyes was like a walk on the beach for Han Senator wherever he went. Blood would bloom like flowers. One creature after another fell under his three-blade harpoon. Nothing could touch him other than the splashing blood. Golden Rock Worm King was summoned by Han Sen, which was already as large as a tank. Opening its mouth, the worm swallowed all the creatures Hansen killed. Although the Golden Rock Worm King had not transformed yet, 
Its shell was so hard that even a mutant creature could not hurt it. Except for its bean-sized eyes, it did not have any Achilles heel. It could only get hurt when a sacred blood creature launched an attack directly at it. In the beginning, Gambler, Zheng Qi, and Shou Qing Yu felt some pressure trying to stop the creatures from coming at the path, but gradually, they found that the creatures no more came their way. When they looked inside, they saw a person covered in blood slaying away in the group of creatures, with piles of bodies stacked next to his feet. The devil-like figure was imprinted in Zhang Qi and Shou Qing Yu's minds. They would never forget about what they saw. They were new members of the special squad and had never seen Hansen in a combat. The only time they saw Hansen showing his strength was with the boomerang. When they just joined the special squad, rumor had it that Hansen became the head of the special squad because of nepotism. Many said he had some special relationship with Qin Xian. Originally, they did not think too much of Hansen, because since they came to the special squad, they had barely seen him. Yang Manli was the one who took care of all the matters in the special squad. Until this point, they came to realize how ridiculous the rumors were. If someone like Hansen were a gigolo, they would both love to become gigolos as well. For the time they had entered God's sanctuary, they had never seen anyone killing creatures like this. Hansen was slaughtering the creatures as if they were chickens. The slaughter was so thrilling that even Zhang Qi and Shou Qing Yu wanted to join him and feel the heat of the blood on their skin. Suddenly, they saw the sacred blood murky beast throwing itself at Han Sen from his back. The murky beast looked like a cross between a lion and a tiger, with two heads and three tails, covered in steel like feathers. Captain, watch. Before Zheng Qi and Shou Qing Yu could finish their words, they suddenly froze. Han Sen moved as fast as electricity. Grabbing a lion-like head, Han Sen cut it off with the three-blade harpoon. Throwing it on the ground, he walked toward the sacred blood murky beast with only one head left. The beast was scared away, but it was hardly able to maintain its balance with one head cut off. Chapter 304 Devil Sword Jing Qi and Shou Qing Yu were dumbstruck. They had never seen someone so powerful. Incredible! Seeing Han Sen killing the murky beast, Zheng Qi couldn't remove his stare from Han Senior. The slaughter continued. The creatures were killed by Han Sen one by one. He is becoming more and more awesome. Gambler leaned against the stone wall, lit a cigarette, and sighed. Gambler, has the captain always been so strong? Zhang Qi couldn't help asking. What should I say? I used to teach him things. Gambler inhaled deeply and blew a cloud of smoke. For real? Both Zhang Qi and Shou Qing Yu widened their eyes and could not believe that. Look at how he draws his weapon. You can't even tell where the weapon was hidden. This is called sleeve blade passed down in my family. If Hansen were not a genius in martial arts, I would never have taught him my family secret. Luckily, he did not let me down. Bragged Gambler, enjoying the worship in Zheng Qi and Shou Qing Yu's eyes. Gambler would never admit that he only taught Hansen sleeve blade for some dirty movies. As Hansen cleared his way, the Golden Rock Worm King also enjoyed a satisfying feast. Hansen only saved the body of Sacred Blood Murky Beast by putting it on the back of the Worm King, who had consumed all the other preys of Hans since. There were an astonishing number of creatures in this nest, the majority of which were mutant. Hansen had killed nearly 100 mutant creatures so far. Mutant Darkness Beast killed. Beast Soul of Mutant Darkness Beast gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 mutant geno points randomly. It was the third mutant beast soul that Hansen had gained and he did not even bother to count how many primitive beast souls he had. The Golden Rock Worm King only picked out the mutant creatures for food. It did not even look at primitive or ordinary creatures. Even so, the Golden Rock Worm King still started belching. It was now as big as a minivan. Eventually, Hansen had come to the egg. Looking at the giant egg, Hansen slashed at it without hesitation, identifying beast soul. As Hansen cleared away the remaining creatures absent-mindedly, he again witnessed the formation of a beast soul, which turned out to be a long sword burning with black flames. Beast soul identified. Sacred blood beast soul devil sword gained. Others might celebrate this result, but Hansen was slightly disappointed. Despite that a sacred blood beast soul was precious, what Hansen needed was a super beast soul. Since he had come thus far, Hansen decided to wipe clean all the remaining creatures. For once, the Golden Rock Worm King could not eat anymore. Although there were mutant creatures left, it stopped moving around. 
Han Sen had been feeding the Worm King for a long time, but it was the first time he had seen the Worm King stopped eating, which amazed Han Senior. This worked for him as well, as he intended to save some mutant creature meat to give Zhang Qi and Shou Ching Yu for their effort. As for Gambler, he had maxed out on mutant Geno points a long time ago and was not really interested in the meat. When Hansen was fighting underground, young Monli who was waiting outside became a bit worried. Since Hansen had spent too much time in the nest, she wanted to check on him and make sure he was safe. Let's go and have a look. Young Monli led people down the nest. The other people knew that young Monli was Hansen's deputy in the special squad and did not doubt that she might be plotting against him. Shall we go down as well? If something goes wrong, we can be of some help, said Yuan, leading the team to join young Monli. Little Finger hesitated and also took a team member with him. He had suffered quite some loss and did not dare to bring too many people. The group went under the nest and were shocked by what they saw. In the giant's nest, dead creatures were lying around. Almost the entire nest was painted with blood. Under the light reflected by the green gold, it looked strange and cruel. The four of them had killed all these creatures? Ching widened his eyes and asked. No one is here except for the four of them. Little Finger was also shocked and could not believe that the four of them could have done such damage. Little Finger thought that even if the entire Fist Gang were here, they could not be so efficient. Incredible! People in Steel Armor Gang were also dumbstruck. Stepping on the blood and dead bodies, they soon spotted Hansen, Gambler, Zheng Qi, and Shou Ching Yu handling the bodies on the ground. It seemed that they were trying to pick out all the mutant creatures. Hansen, in the entire shelter, you're my only idol in addition to Dollar. Ching gave Hansen a thumbs up. Impressive, Hansen, said Little Finger with complex feelings. Yang Manli did not speak, but also had a mix of feelings. She already had a high estimate of Hansen's ability, but still failed to predict that he was able to wipe out the entire nest with his team. As a member of the special squad, Yang Manli knew that Zheng Qi and Shou Ching Yu were not the strongest team members, so Gambler and Hansen must be the ones who really achieved this. However, Gambler was good at playing tricks instead of fighting head-on. Obviously, Hansen was the MVP here. After the fight in the nest, Hansen had gained a lot of prestige in Steel Armor Shelter. Because everyone believed Dollar, who had not made his appearance in a long time had become an Evolver, Hansen was now considered number one in the shelter. Chapter 305 Be Soul Add On Han Hao was quite upset. He could not understand, for the love of God, why Han Sen, who was the pariah in Steel Armor Shelter, had become a military school student, a movie star in a commercial, and now the number one in the shelter. The disciples and the Fist Gang both respected Han Sen a lot. Even their leaders called Han Sen brother. Han Hao had also heard that Yang Manli, who was leading the Steel Armor Gang, turned out to be Han Sen's deputy. At this point, Han Hao started to regret what he used to do. Had he maintained a better relationship with his cousin, he would have done much better. Han Hao did not even know when he could max out on his mutant geno points. Struggling alone in the shelter is so difficult. And the Son of Heaven gang that he depended on was getting weaker and weaker, making it impossible for him to catch up. You can't imagine how fierce Han Sen was. He only had three people with him, and they wiped clean the entire nest that none of the gangs were able to tackle. Hearing the discussion of Han Sen's bravery, Han Hao felt worse and quickly went back to his own room. At this time, Hansen was appreciating his newly gained Sacred Blood Beast Soul Devil Sword. Type of Beast Soul of Sacred Blood Devil Sword, Sword Add-On. Hansen had seen an add-on Beast Soul before, which was the Sacred Blood Water Spirit Beast Soul owned by Qin Xian. However, the Weather Spirit worked together with a shape-shifting Beast Soul to enhance the user's physique, while the Devil Sword could only be used on another sword. For Hansen, this was a very useful type of beast soul. If Hansen was not able to gain a super beast soul weapon, he could only choose to use a sacred blood weapon when hunting super creatures, which would be very difficult. With this devil sword, a sacred blood sword could be enhanced. Although the enhanced weapon might still fall short to a super beast soul, it would be undoubtedly much stronger than an ordinary sacred blood weapon. Taking up the diamond sword, Hansen used the devil sword on it. Black smoke suddenly filled the diamond sword, making the crystal clear sword look like it was made of onyx, exuding brilliance. Hansen brandished the sword and tested it on a piece of Z-steel, which was cut in half instantaneously like it was tofu. Impressive! 
Hansen became overjoyed. The Devil Sword was indeed a fantastic add-on. Unwilling to test it on any sacred blood weapons, Hansen was not sure how strong it actually was. Both the Flame Lieutenant and Devil Sword will be great help for me to kill super creatures. These nests are indeed full of treasures. I wish there were more. Although Hansen did not gain a super beast soul, he was not too disappointed. Taking back the beast soul and putting down the diamond sword, Hansen teleported back to Blackhawk. The Sacred Blood Murky Beast brought five more Sacred Geno points to Hans Senator, now he had 78 Sacred Geno points. At this point, unless there was a hunting campaign for Sacred Blood creatures, Hansen rarely went out. He spent most of his time on practicing panorama, trying to reach a balance of all kinds of abilities. This way, it was easier for him to hunt a super creature while protecting himself. Hansen rested for a night and went to the training hall in the morning. He picked a holographic device and logged in Gladiator again. Wang Yulei and Su Zhu had waited for him for two days. They were about to give up since Han Sun was never online. This day when Su Zhu logged in, he sent another invite to a soldier on warship. This time, he did not hear the prompt tone of the system. Su Zhu quickly sent a voice message to Huang Yulei, Huang Yulei, the soldier is online. Ah, where are you? Did he agree to fight? This time we must teach him a lesson said Huang Yulei hurriedly. When Su Zhu was about to answer, he found himself in the Colosseum already. Obviously, his opponent had agreed to the challenge. He agreed. Hurry over to watch. Su Zhu quickly sent Huang Yulei an invite to observe. Huang Yulei clicked yes and found himself on the stands of the Colosseum, and he was not alone. Huang Yulei was surprised to find someone else there, and he knew that person as well. Desperado, how come you're here as well? Huang Yulei quickly asked the person next to him. I was about to ask you the same thing, said Desperado. Su Zhu asked me to watch. Did he invite you as well? He didn't tell me that. Desperado paused and asked, Su Zhu is the opponent of a soldier on warship? Yes. So, you're not invited by Su Zhu? Huang Yulei looked at Desperado, puzzled. Desperado shook his head. Su Zhu did not invite me. A soldier on warship is in my friend list. I saw him entering a fight and chose to watch. Wang Yulei was shocked and asked, How come you are his friend? Do you know him? Desperado was one of the more advanced evolvers in Ares Martial Hall. He was only second to Queen. If Desperado was the soldier's friend, then it was very likely that the soldier was also a big shot in Ares Martial Hall. No, I do not know him. I was only randomly matched with him a couple times. I added him because I found him interesting. Desperado then asked Huang Yulei, so what is this about? Huang Yulei did not answer but asked, this person is on your level? No wonder Huang Yulei was surprised. No evolver could beat Desperado in Ares Martial Hall, except for Queen. Desperado said he had fought the soldier several times, which meant the soldier was on the same level as Desperado. In this case, there was no way that Su Zhu could beat him. Chapter 306, Diversion. He is not. I was able to beat him each time in a very short amount of time. His fitness is just SOSO, but... Desperado paused. But what? Asked Wang Yulei hurriedly. This person gave me a strange feeling. Even I was able to beat him easily, I did not feel good about the win. So I added him as a friend and wanted to see his other fights. Just now, I saw him entering a fight and chose to watch. I didn't realize that I would meet you guys here, said Desperado not feeling good about the win? Huang Yulei did not quite understand what he meant by the expression. Well, I did beat him fast and easy, but I just did not feel good. It is hard for me to explain, which is why I want to watch his other fights more closely. Desperado pondered and was not able to explain very clearly. Desperado then asked Huang Yulei, what's happening here? With some reluctance, Huang Yulei explained his encounter with the soldier. What are you saying? He learned 13 slashes after watching a dozen times? Desperado regarded Huang Yulei incredulously. I suspect that he was hiding his real ability in the beginning. He must have always known 13 slashes, otherwise it was impossible for him to learn in such a short amount of time, said Huang Yulei. That is very likely. Desperado nodded and looked to the Colosseum. The fight had begun. Huang Yulei saw Han Sin and gasped. What's wrong? Desperado looked to Huang Yulei, puzzled. This is weird. Why is he not using double blades? Wang Yulei frowned. If Hansen was good at double blades, he should be using them. However, 
Hansen was empty-handed like Suju was. Let's wait and see. Desperado also felt strange, but it was too early to tell. Wang Yulei regarded a soldier on warship. According to what Desperado told him, this person did not have a high fitness index, which Su Zhu also felt when fighting him. His index should be a little more than 20. Huang Yulei supposed this person should be someone who just evolved with his mutant geno points maxed out. As for Su Zhu, Huang Yulei knew very well that his fitness index had reached 30. Although it was not so impressive among evolvers, it should be easy for him to beat a newly evolved person. In addition, Su Zhu's specialty was grappling which could easily make a less fit person suffer. Su Zhu had a special way to twist joints. Once grabbed by him, his opponent would immediately be put out of action because of the pain. Of course, in a simulated fight there was no pain involved. However, Su Zhu's grappling was still very handy on someone weaker than him. As the fight began, Su Zhu immediately approached Han Senator the reason why Huang Yulei asked Su Zhu to kick Han Sen's ass, in addition to their close relationship was that Su Zhu's specialty allowed him to disable Han Sen and force Han Sen to surrender. The most humiliating way of losing in a simulated fight was undoubtedly to surrender. After all, one could never die in the simulated fight, so everyone would want to fight until the end instead of giving in. Su Zhu was glad to see that Han Sen did not try to run from him. After approaching Han Sen, Su Zhu clawed at Han Sen with one hand. Han Sen had practiced Ghost Haunt, the main focus of which was also grappling. Although it didn't involve twisting joints, which Su Zhu was good at, Han Sen was able to tell that Su Zhu was using grappling. Grappling against grappling it is. Han Sen quickly used the footwork in Ghost Haunt to meet his rival. Using grappling against Su Zhu? What a dork. Wang Yule smirked. Su Zhu's grappling techniques were more than it appeared to be. Many people in Ares Martial Hall knew how to twist joints, and many practiced other grappling techniques. However, no one with a similar fitness index was Su Zhu's match. The reason was that Su Zhu knew more than grappling. He was also great at diversion. Diversion was a technique developed from the ancient martial art cicada shedding skin. To practice diversion, one must be highly nimble. Normally speaking, those who could practice diversion must start to lay the foundation from a young age when one's bones were still malleable. After one entered God's Sanctuary and gained Geno points, one could then start to practice diversion, although whether or not one could be successful still depended on one's talent. Diversion could be used not only to defend oneself by diverting the incoming attacks, but also transforming the coming force to attack the opponent. When the opponent tried to grab you with a single move, you could break your opponent's arm with his own force. Trying to match Su Zhu's grappling with a similar technique was a foolish move. Suju was thinking the same. Seeing Hansen trying to seize him, Suju thought, Boy, using grappling against me is a great way of suicide. I will show you how effective diversion is. As Suju reached his hand out, he faked getting caught by Hans Senator seizing Suju's wrist. Hansen immediately used Spartacle to dodge Suju's attack. When Hansen was about to twist Suju's arm, Suju's wrist and Hansen's hand suddenly flicked. Crack. Han Sen's right hand, which was holding Su Zhu's wrist, was immediately dislocated by this flick. Su Zhu's left hand then wound around Han Sen's right arm and put his shoulder out. With his wrist and shoulder both dislocated, Han Sen had lost all movability of his right arm. If they were in reality, only the pain would make Han Sen scream. However, this was just a simulated fight. Han Sen was not significantly hurt and was only taken off 7% from his health. Chapter 307 a soldier in opponent's territory. Hansen stepped back and dodged Su Zhu's following attacks. Regarding Su Zhu calmly, Hansen felt somewhat surprised. He had been in Gladiator for a long time. Because of his low winning rate, barely anyone would invite him to fight. He almost always chose to be matched randomly. However, someone invited him this time. Hansen thought his opponent must be a newbie trying to find someone even weaker. However, as the fight started, Hansen found that his opponent was great at grappling and even better at diversion. The way he used the incoming force to hurt Hansen was a very smart way of fighting. Panorama also included similar techniques, which Hansen had practiced in the recent half year. If he was able to accomplish the same, it would be impossible for his opponent to catch him. This technique was very useful when it came to fighting the creatures with lots of arms or tentacles. However, diversion was very hard to practice. The key to practice diversion was to do it in real combat. 
Currently, Hansen still only understood diversion from a theoretical perspective. Luckily, Hansen had practiced Ghost Haunt before, so he was no stranger to such techniques. Even so, it would still take Hansen quite a while to perform diversion in the real combat. Seeing Su Zhu's diversion, Hansen felt very impressed. The Evolvers indeed all have great techniques. Fortunately, we are using simulated bodies. Otherwise, if they use the Hyper Geno Arts that could change their body cells, there is no way I could be their match. Hansen thought to himself. Seeing Hansen trying to retreat, Su Zhu immediately followed up. Suddenly, Su Zhu saw Hansen grabbing his own right arm with his left hand and put the dislocated joints back to place. Su Zhu couldn't help frowning. Hansen was very skilled at it that he must be someone who had practiced similar skills before. However, Su Zhu did not pay too much attention to that. Hansen was so much worse in fitness than Su Zhu that even if Hansen had practiced diversion, he would not be able to compare to Su Zhu. Su Zhu threw himself at Hansen one more time. The two were 10 points apart in their fitness index. Even if Hansen wanted to run away, it could not be done. Without moving a muscle, Hansen's heart suddenly started to beat much stronger and faster than a normal person's. Motivated by the heartbeat, the chi and blood in his body started to flow at a high speed, pushing Hansen's fitness to a high level. Although Hansen's fitness index was still lower than 30, but his strength and speed must be around 28. It was rare that Hansen met someone good at diversion, whose fitness index was not too much higher than him either. Hansen did not want to lose too fast. He wanted to see how diversion worked more closely. Indeed, he was faking it. His fitness level was not that low. Huang Yule exclaimed when he saw Hansen's speed and strength got much better. Watching Hansen, Desperado remained silent. He felt Hansen's behaviors were strange, but he could not tell how so. Hansen and Su Zhu were once again at each other's throat. Although Hansen had used Heresy Mantra to enhance his fitness level, he was still much less stronger than Su Zhu. In addition, Su Zhu's grappling and diversion techniques were both much better than Hansen's. Therefore, Hansen was still at an absolute disadvantage. Hansen's arms were dislocated by Su Zhu a couple more times, but he survived each time using Ghost Haunt and the disordered footwork of the White Jade Skeleton. Although he was caught multiple times by Su Zhu, he always managed to run away. Although Ghost Haunt was not as advanced as Diversion, it was taught to Hansen by a veteran who had survived many battles. Many of the techniques were extremely practical and helped Hansen in this extreme situation. Although Su Zhu was always at an advantage, he was never able to truly lock Hansen down. In addition, in a simulated fight, grappling could cause much less damage than other attacks. After more than half an hour, although Hansen was hurt many times, he still had about 40% of his health left. As Huang Yule watched the game, he started to feel familiar. In his fight with Han Sound, he was also at an absolute advantage in the beginning, but lost to Hansen under his own 13 slashes. No way. There is no way he could learn diversion from Su Xiu. Huang Yule shook his head and denied his own speculation. Diversion was much more demanding on the user than 13 slashes. One must lay the foundation since little. He had hardly heard someone could succeed starting as an adult. Huang Yule did not believe that Hansen could learn diversion during this fight, as he did not even believe that Hansen learned 13 slashes on the spot when fighting himself. As the fight continued, Huang Yule's face became stiff. Indeed, Hansen was making incredible progress. He could tell that Hansen was less likely to be caught by Suju and faster when trying to wriggle free. No way. Huang Yule became anxious and could not believe his own thought that he could no longer deny. Desperado knitted his brows and did not say anything, watching Hansen's every move closely. In the Colosseum, Suju was also shocked. As even Huang Yule was able to tell Hansen's progress, Suju felt stronger as Hansen's opponent. He could clearly sense that his opponent was getting better at grappling so fast that it frightened him. Su Zhu found that there was little he could do against this opponent. Although he was still at an advantage, it was hard for him to beat Han Sr. A soldier on warship was like a soldier in opponent's territory, fighting fearless and looking death calmly in the face. And he could do nothing to the soldier, but watch him getting stronger and stronger. Chapter 308 Who is he? Diversion Impossible Wang Yule's pupils contracted as he saw Su Zhu's arm broken at a flick of Han Sen's wrist. Su Zhu was shocked as well. 
He did not expect his opponent could really use diversion well. Suju still did not believe Han Sen could have learned everything in such a short amount of time. Putting his arm back in place, Suju once again tried to grab Han Senator this time. However, his target was not Han Sen's arm, but leg. The reason why it was hard to practice diversion was that one must be able to perform diversion in each body part. Indeed, Hansen was not able to perform diversion with his other body parts. However, to Suju's shock, as Hansen became familiarized with the technique, he learned to do it with more and more body parts. Wang Yule was rendered speechless. A soldier on warship did learn diversion from Suju in this combat. Huang Yulei now somewhat believed that maybe he also learned 13 slashes in their fight. However, this did not even make sense to him. Although he had heard of geniuses who could learn others' martial arts while watching, he had never seen anyone could actually do it. I know why I would feel bad when beating him, exclaimed Desperado suddenly. He was copying my moves. When he fought me, he did the same thing. No wonder I felt bad. He wanted to beat me with my own techniques. After watching Suju and Han Sen's fight, Desperado finally understood why he had that feeling. When he was fighting Han Sen, although Han Sen used a seemingly disordered footwork, it was not the root of his discomfort. He was upset because Han Sen wanted to use his own moves against him. Because Han Sen lost too fast, Desperado thought it was a coincidence that the guy practiced the same type of martial arts. Now thinking back, it was not at all a coincidence. Han Sen was copying him on purpose. This guy. Huang Yule looked at Hansen with complex emotions. Hansen was always trying to learn from his opponent's tricks. No wonder he had lost so many times. It must have something to do with this. In the Colosseum, Hansen was gaining momentum. Shattered psychologically, Suju found harder and harder to cope with Hansen's attacks. Crack. When Suju clawed Hansen's chest, Hansen dislocated Suju's wrist with a shrug. Then he quickly threw himself at Suju. At this point, Hansen had edited Ghost Haunt with Suju's techniques, so it was now even stronger than diversion. Locked down by Hansen, Suju found him unable to divert Hansen's force since Hansen's haunting techniques prevented him from doing that. Unable to wriggle free, Suju had to surrender and end the game. Having learned the tricks of diversion, Hansen was exhilarated. He stopped looking for other opponents but left Gladiator. As he still remembered everything, he decided to practice diversion a bit more. Although the simulated body moved exactly how he did, he couldn't feel anything, so it was still different. Suju came out chagrined at his failure. Seeing Desperado together with Huang Yule, he was dazed. Huang Yule quickly asked, Brother, you think he learned diversion during your combat? Suju smiled bitterly and nodded. He did learn it from fighting with me. There is no question in that. This person is such a fast learner. I think he also learned 13 slashes from you and did not know how to use it before your fight. Indeed, this person learned so fast. I wonder who he is, said Desperado. Desperado, aren't you his friend? Send him a text and ask him, said Huang Yule. I'll try. Although I added him, I have never talked to him, so I'm not sure if he will reply. Desperado checked and saw Hansen had already left Gladiator. He's offline now. I'll do it next time, said Desperado. Suju nodded absentmindedly. Beaten like this, he was devastated. Wang Yule's eyes suddenly lit up. He suggested, do you think that person would be interested in him? Which person? Suju and Desperado both looked to Wang Yule, not sure who he was talking about. The person who is the apple of the eye of our president, said Wang Yule with his lips curled downward. This is a great idea. That person might really be interested in this soldier guy. Then we can all be freed. Suju's eyes also lit up. The person they were talking about was Qian Hezhen, the youngest students of the president of Ares Martial Hall, Daniel. Qian Hezhen was gifted and learned everything fast, which was why Huang Fu Xiangqing saw his youngest student as his successor. Qian Hezhen did not abuse the president's confidence in him either. He had just evolved and already succeeded in practicing several secret martial arts of Ares Martial Hall. However, Qian Hizhen was not satisfied with what he had achieved, but kept challenging the renowned students in Ares Martial Hall. Even a master like Desperado was annoyed to death by him. The students could not turn Qian Hizhen down because he was backed by Hung Fu, which was why their heads hurt whenever seeing Qian Hizhen. Chapter 309 Threatened After Hansen left the training hall, he felt extremely sore. Blue veins stood out all over his body, which looked frightening. 
Hansen knew that it was because he had used heresy mantra for too long, which was a heavy burden on his body. Had his heart and veins not been strengthened during the first phase of heresy mantra, his organs would probably have exploded. Even after the enhancement, his body still couldn't stand the tremendous burden. At this time, Hansen became so exhausted that he could barely stand. He originally wanted to practice diversion a bit more, but could no longer do that. Sitting alone in the training hall, Hansen decided to go back to the dormitory after he recovered. News was playing in the training hall, most of which was about God's sanctuary, such as someone had gone to the fourth God's sanctuary, someone had become a demigod, and someone had become a sacred blood aristocrat. After watching a while, Hansen's attention was suddenly caught by a specific message. It was a short story read by the anchor, which was soon drowned in many similar stories. However, Hansen suddenly became excited. He quickly turned on his comlink and started searching on the Skynet. Very soon, Hansen found some useful information and his eyes lit up. The news was about the glory shelter in First God's Sanctuary. Someone found a strong sacred blood creature in the mountains near Glory Shelter. Almost the entire Glory Shelter teamed up to hunt the creature, but they were not even able to hurt it, even at the cost of many lives. Hansen found the comments on this matter from people in Glory Shelter. Because many of them had seen the sacred blood creature, their description of it was rather clear. It was a turtle-like creature, dark as ink and large as a car. Its body was so stiff that even sacred blood weapons could not scratch its shell. Many people died in its teeth. The huge turtle was not fast, otherwise more people might have died. Many believed that this black turtle was even stronger than a sacred blood crystal shell turtle and should be the strongest turtle creature that people had ever witnessed in First God's Sanctuary. Many people described the fighting scene, which convinced Hansen that it was very likely to be a super creature. According to people from Glory Shelter, the Black Turtle was obviously much stronger than a typical sacred blood creature. No sacred blood weapons could hurt it, and its only weakness was its speed. Otherwise, more than half of the Glory Shelter would die there. If they were not exaggerating too much, Hansen believed the turtle must be a super creature. For half a year, Hansen had been improving his own strength and asking around about super creatures. After all, even if he was able to kill a super creature, there must be one for him to kill. However, super creatures were even more rare than sacred blood creatures. This turtle was the only candidate Hansen had seen in half a year. Hansen viewed all the discussions about the turtle again and knew that the black turtle came out from the ocean. Someone tried to hunt it after spotting it. They not only failed but also lost a lot of good men. The black turtle had now climbed into the Copper Mountains. Because people from Glory Shelter had no way to kill it, they did not bother to track it down. At this point, all they knew was that it was somewhere in the Copper Mountains. Hansen was still thinking whether he should go to Glory Shelter. He had been there once and knew the way very well. If he flew over the Dark Swamp, he could get there in a fortnight. However, he had not yet completed the third phase longevity of Heresy Mantra. Hansen was not sure if he was strong enough to kill a super creature, which was why he was still hesitating. Brother, you spend a long time using the holographic device and you are soaked. Keep hydrated. Someone suddenly appeared next to Hansen, throwing a bottle of water to him. To his surprise, it was Jing Jia. Jing Jia had been waiting for Hansen to challenge him proactively, but nothing had happened in days. Jing Jia realized that Hansen was much more mature than he thought, completely unaffected by the rumors. However, Jing Jia was not someone who would easily give up. Getting the message that Hansen was in the training hall, he quickly came over and waited for Hansen there. In fact, he had been here for quite a while. After Hansen came out from the device, he was sitting near Jing Jia, but Jing Jia did not come to him right away. The freshman first went to purchase two bottles of water before he sat down next to Han Sr. Relax, I did not poison the water, said Jing Jia with a smile. Thank you then. Hansen opened the bottle and drank more than half of the water. He did sweat a lot and was dehydrated. Because of his exhaustion, Hansen did not bother to get up and buy water. Now that Jing Jia was handing him a bottle, he gladly accepted it. Jing Jia looked at him, interested. You're really not afraid that I might poison the water? The younger brother of Jing Jiwu would not use that kind of scheme, said Hansen casually. In fact, he would not even be scared if there were poison in it. In addition, it made no sense for Jing Jia to do it in public, 
since cameras were installed everywhere, and he would have no way to exonerate himself. Han Sen's words made Jing Ji a pause. The freshman did not realize that Han Sen would have such respect for his older brother. However, Jing Ji was someone who had to reach his goal. He smiled and said to Han Sen softly, I'm not my brother. Just because he won't use these schemes, it does not mean that I will not. If you are not willing to accept my challenge, then I will have to use some dirty tricks even if I don't want to. Such as? Hansen took another sip of water and asked, I know that your mom's name is Luo Sulan and the shelter she belonged to in Second God Sanctuary. And you have a sister named Han Yen. She is very cute and studies. Jing Jia always had a faint smile on his face and looked harmless. When girls saw him, their hearts would race. Chapter 310 As You Wish Hearing Jing Jia's words, Hansen smiled and patted him on the shoulder. Jing Jia, if you want to threaten someone, you'll have to be smart. When you speak, try to act like a tough guy so that I might be scared. Jing Jia's face became grim. He said, Brother, I am not joking. Leaning against the back of his chair, Hansen stretched and said slowly, Since you have investigated my family, you should know who I am. Do you dare to touch them? Now tell me again you're not joking. Jing Jia smiled and said, Brother, you're right. I do not dare to touch your family, but your friends might not be as lucky. I don't dare to do anything to Wang Ming Ming or Lu Meng either, but Shi sure Kong and Zhang Yang were under no one's protection. I would be interested to know how you plan to hurt them in Blackhawk, said Han Sr. Jing Jia was still smiling. It will not be easy for me to injure them on campus, and it's going to be a waste of time to hurt their family. But do you think I could seduce their girlfriends? You think I'm going to succeed? Jing Jia, there are things that you should never do, replied Hansen solemnly. Whether Jing Jia could succeed or not, he will not let it happen. If you're angry, you can take it out on me during our duel anytime, said Jing Jia with politely. As you wish then. Although Hansen did not want to waste his time, he no longer wanted to tolerate the kid's provocation. He would take care of what should be taken care of. Jing Jia appeared to be exhilarated. I will be waiting for you. Please keep your words. Otherwise, Jing Jia did not finish his sentence, but even an idiot could understand it. Hansen smiled and said, Jing Jiwu did not teach his brother well, so I will be a good friend and do that for him. Jing Jia was a bit upset hearing that, but he did not talk back. Since Hansen had agreed to his challenge, all he needed to do was beating Han Senator it was pointless to win an argument. Jing Jia had always thought that only by defeating Hansen could he avenge his brother. Seeing Jing Jia left, Hansen immediately moved on to consider his trip to Glory Shelter. Although he might still be a bit weak, maybe he could give it a shot. Flame Lieutenant, Devil Sword and the second phase of Heresy Mantra, those might be all that it took for him to kill a super creature. Most importantly, the Black Turtle was not very fast, so he could always run away. It seems I should make the trip. Tomorrow after I kick the kid's ass, I'll leave for Glory Shelter. Hansen did not want to miss the opportunity. After all, super creatures were so rare that he did not know when he would see the next one if he missed this turtle. After Jing Jia left, he spread the news that he was about to challenge Hansen the next day on the archery range. In order to clear his brother's name, he would like for everyone to know how he beat Han Sr. Jing Jia had even thought of his line after beating Hansen. Although you are quite good, you're still nothing compared to me, and even less than nothing compared to my older brother. Your one win was just based on pure luck. Soon the entire Blackhawk knew about the duel. Almost everyone hearing the news became excited. Hansen was the legend of Blackhawk, and Jing Jia was another monster after his older brother, so their duel attracted a lot of attention. Even many professors decided to have a look after hearing about it. The next morning, before Hansen and Jing Jia got there, the stands around the archery range was packed with audience. Who do you think will win? The genius, of course. Even Jing Jiwu was not his match, let alone Jing Jia. The senior students who had witnessed how strong Hansen was mostly supported him. I don't think so. You have all seen Jing Jia's record, which is probably even better than Jing Jiwu when he was at school. Hansen only beat Jing Jiwu because of good luck, and he had not done much in recent two years. I'm afraid he will lose to Jing Jia. Among freshmen, more people supported Jing Jia, especially the girls. Jing Jia's good looks won him a lot of popularity. Miss Chen, you're also here to see the duel? Sidu Xiang looked at Chen Ling in surprise. Yes, 
Hansen once represented the martial arts society, and I have come to support him, said Chin Ling with a smile. Come and join me. The view is better here. Situ Xiang brought Chin Ling to the coach's bench. Coach, who do you think he has a better chance, Hansen or Jing Jia? Chin Ling asked. It is very hard to say. So many things had happened to Hansen in the recent two years, and I can say that Jing Jia has even surpassed his brother, replied Situ Xiang with a bitter smile. Chen Ling knew what the coach was saying, so she nodded and did not speak again. Han Sen's roommates also came to cheer him up, and Wang Mingming came with them as well. However, the stands were so full they had to watch on their feet. Can Han Sen win? That Jing Jia kid is quite something, said Shirji Kong with his brows knitted. He had seen Jing Jia's match, and the kid was indeed quite talented. Jing Jia was also in the archery department, so Shirji Kong had competed with him a few times. Shirji Kong sensed even more stress facing Jing Jia than when he met Jing Jiwu. Zhang Yang and Lu Ming did not speak. In fact, they both had fought Jing Jia and suffered terrible losses. They felt the same as Shirji Kong did. Jing Jia was even more formidable than Jing Jiwu. Brother Han will definitely win. Wang Ming Ming was Han Sen's diehard fan and believed in him as always. Chapter 311 Spinning Away Han Sen waved at his friends and entered the archery range. At the same time, Jing Jia also entered the range. Han Sen, there is something that I should probably tell you beforehand. Jing Jia walked over to Han Sen and said with a smile. If you want to tell me, then tell me, said Han Sen casually. Jing Jia smiled and said nothing. He walked to the bow rack, took a 16.0 practice bow and a quiver full of arrows, and returned to Han Senior. The next second, Jing Jia straightened his back, knocked an arrow, and made a shot casually. That was only a start. He then quickly shot nine more arrows, between which there was almost no gap. The ten arrows were like a straight line, flying toward the target 60 feet away. Students were dumbstruck. If it was very hard to believe that with a 16.0 arrow, Jing Jia was able to shoot a succession of ten arrows. His strength was beyond their imagination. He is indeed even stronger than Jing Jiwu at his age, mumbled Situ Xiang. Chen Ling was also amazed. Among the unevolved, very few people had this kind of strength, not to mention Jing Jia was just a freshman. As people were shocked by what Jing Jia could do, they found the bigger surprise was yet to come. As the first arrow hit the bull's eye, the second arrow suddenly made a strange turn when it was about to hit the first, which was the same case with the remaining eight arrows. When all ten arrows were on the target, people found that only the first one hit the bull's eye while the other nine arrows formed a circle with the first arrow as the center. Everybody widened their mouth. Someone yelped and said, Spinning arrow. Isn't that Hansen's spinning arrow? How come Jing Jia can also do that? At this point, even Situ Xiang cannot believe her eyes. Jing Jia used a 16.0 bow to shoot a succession of 10 arrows, nine of which were spinning. Judging from the way that the arrows were aligned, she knew that Jing Jia was already an archery master. Monster. A monster more formidable than Jing Jiwu was, lamented Situ Xian. She had hoped that Hansen would win, but did not have much faith after watching Jing Jia's performance. Hansen's most impressive skill was spinning arrow, with which he beat Jing Jiwu. However, Jing Jia seemed to be even better at that, and he even had a higher fitness index than his older brother. There was simply no way that Hansen could beat Jing Jia. Jing Jia also knows spinning arrow, and it looks like he has mastered it. Hansen is in trouble now. What great archery skills. I'm afraid Hansen will not be better than him. Using a 16.0 bow at will, Jing Jia is more formidable than Jing Jiwu was. At this point, Shi Ji Kong, Zhang Yang, and Lu Ming all became pale. Shi Ji Kong exclaimed, How come this guy also knows Hansen's spinning arrow? I've heard that it is almost impossible for an unevolved person to do that. Almost, but not completely impossible. Jing Jia and Hansen are both exceptions, said Lu Ming calmly, looking worried nonetheless. The crowd were in awe of Jing Jia's archery skills, and few people believed that Hansen could still win. What do you think my spinning arrow, brother? Jing Jia asked, amused. Jing Jia, it is quite impressive for your age. Good job, said Hansen in appreciation. He did appreciate what Jing Jia could do. Although Jing Jia had not practiced in Yang Blast, he managed to achieve the effect of the spinning arrow by practicing archery techniques alone. 
Hearing Han Sen's words, Jing Jia felt belittled. At your age? It sounded like he was a kid trying to impress his parents with a golden star awarded by school. Since you said that, you must have stronger archery skills than I do. Why don't you show us? Suggested Jing Jia with his brows knitted. No need. I don't have much time. Let's just get started with the duel. Hansen immediately went to the bow rack, picking up a bow and a quiver of arrows. The students were surprised by Han Sen's choice of bow. He picked an 11.0 practice bow, which was too weak for any archery student. Anyone could easily use a bow like this. Hansen seems to be overly confident. How can he compete with Jing Jia with an 11.0 bow? Wait a minute. The bow he used to beat Jing Ji Wu was also an 11.0 bow. Maybe he wants to do it again? I don't think it's going to happen. Last time the victory was mainly because of the great tactics coach Situ Xiong used. Also, Jing Jiwu did not know there was such a thing as spinning arrow and was taken by surprise. However, now Jing Jia knows about the spinning arrow and is even better at it than Han Senator. How can Hansen possibly win with an 11.0 bow? What is Sin trying to pull? He should have picked a strong bow in any case. Shi sure, Kong was stunned trying to understand why Han Sen would have picked an 11.0 bow. Lu Ming did not speak, as he did not understand either. Nor did Zhang Yang. He looked at Wang Ming Ming and asked, Ming Ming, didn't you use to learn archery skills from Han Sen? Tell us, what is he trying to do? Wang Ming Ming pondered and answered, Brother Han must feel that it is too easy to beat Jing Jia anyway, so he picked the first bow he saw. I don't believe it means anything. Chapter 312 an effortless shot. Many students were eavesdropping on the conversations between Han Sen's friends, trying to pick up some insider perspectives. However, hearing what Wang Ming Ming said, they all stared at her as if she were crazy. Even Han Sen's roommates found Wang Ming Ming's reply out of line. It was simply impossible for Han Sen to think beating Jing Jia was a piece of cake. Someone who could shoot a succession of 10 arrows with a 16.0 bow, nine of which were spinning, would never lose easily. Whether or not Han Sen could beat him remained a question. The eavesdroppers had determined that Wang Ming Ming must be a diehard fan, whose words were hardly believable. Situ Xiang and Chen Ling were also surprised by Han Sen's choice. Chen Ling asked Situ Xiang, Coach, I don't know that much about archery, but isn't an 11.0 bow much weaker than a 16.01? Situ Xiang nodded and said, if they were on the same level, the 16.0 bow is much stronger than an 11.01. Then why did Hansen pick an 11.0 bow? With his strength, even if he cannot use a 16.0, he could always choose a 15.0 or 14.0, right? Chan Ling was puzzled. Situ Xiang smiled wryly and said, I don't understand either. If there is any reason, maybe he wants to beat the two brothers with the same kind of bow. Is that even possible? Although Chen Ling did not know archery, she knew how difficult it must be to beat Jing Jia with a weak bow. I can't tell. Situ Xiang's words were rather conservative, because in her view, Hansen was doomed. Seeing Hansen's bow, Jing Jia's face darkened. He could no longer keep up his good manners and asked sharply, Brother, are you really going to use the bow? Can I? Hansen said quietly. Sure. Jing Jia took a deep breath and tried to calm himself down. He knew that being flighty and impatient was a big no-no before a duel. Although he had no doubt that he would win, he did not want to take his opponent lightly. No matter what Bao Hansen had picked, Jing Jia decided to go all in and leave Hansen no chance. Since you're okay with it, let's start. Hansen did not want to waste more time. After the duel, he must leave for Glory's shelter. The trip would take him at least a month, and he must hurry. Okay, replied Jing Jia. He walked away from Han Sen and stopped when they were 220 feet apart. Jing Jia turned back and said to Han Sen with a smile, You beat my brother at this distance. How about we have the duel under the same condition? Jing Jia had thought about this a long time ago. He wanted to avenge his brother at the same distance. As you like, said Han Sen indifferently. Coach Situ Xiang, would you do the honor and blow the whistle? Jing Jia asked Situ Xiang with a smile. Situ Xiang nodded gave a pause, and blew her neck whistle. All eyes were on Hansen and Jing Jia. The moment the whistle was blown, Jing Jia shot the exact same succession of 10 arrows at Han Sr. Because the bow was strong, the 10 arrows were in Hansen's face in no time. 
Jing Jie knew very well that although the ten arrows seemed to be aligned, they would scatter into a storm in Han Sen's face and block every direction, thanks to the spinning techniques. Jing Jie had worked hard on spinning arrow in order to beat Han Sen this way. He had to beat Han Sen with Han Sen's own tricks to clear his brother's name. Han Sen saw what Jing Jie did, but only shot one arrow in a languid manner. It seemed that he did not even pull the string to the fullest, and he did not make a second shot either. Putting the bow down, Hansen stood there and watched. Looks like Hansen has given up. He didn't even want to win. No wonder he picked an 11.0 bow. The genius has fallen. This is such a boring duel to watch. It's such a shame that Jing Jia treats him seriously. He not only disrespects his opponent, he disrespects himself as well. It is the same genius I used to worship. It seems he's not the same person after the accident. Situ Xiang was also very disappointed. According to what she remembered, Hansen was not someone who would easily give up, let alone make a move that equals surrender. However, she had seen it happen with her own eyes. Situ Xiang thought to herself, is the archery emperor gone forever? Even Jing Jia was dumbstruck by Hansen's attitude. He wanted to beat Hansen, but not like this. Such a loser and such terrible skills, what point would he be making even if he could beat Hansen? It would probably bring his brother Jing Jiwu more shame. If Jing Jiwu had lost to a genius, Jing Jia could accept it. However, it seemed that Jing Jiwu had lost to a scum. Hansen, on the other hand, was very satisfied with the shot he made. The power of the spinning arrow did not lie in its speed or strength, but how it spanned. Although Jing Jia's spinning arrow seemed impressive, in Hansen's eyes, those arrows were barely spinning. Although Han Sen's shot was not fast, but it carried a spinning force that Jing Jia could not even imagine. In addition, Han Sen's shot also represented his understanding of the spinning force and Yin Yang blast in the recent two years. Although it was not fast, Han Sen was quite satisfied with what he had done. Jing Jia's arrows had arrived, the first of which was about to clash with the arrow Han Sen shot. All the audience just saw what Jing Jia could do and knew that his arrows could make strange turns and avoid Hansen's arrow. Therefore, even if Hansen had also made his arrow spin, it would not change anything. Chapter 313 Emperor Returns When Jing Jia's arrow was about to hit Hansen's, something unbelievable happened. Jing Jia's arrow did not move aside, but was leaning toward Hansen's arrow like it was a magnet. Bang! The two arrows clashed. Hansen's slow arrow knocked Jing Jia's away and then became faster. Bang bang bang. Hansen's arrow clashed successively with all 10 arrows shot by Jing Jia and knocked all 10 away. Its strength was not weakened but enhanced after the cracking sounds. Whoosh. The arrow ended up on Jing Jia's chest. Taking the hit, Jing Jia staggered back a few steps and fell to the ground. Jing Jia looked down at the arrow on his chest incredulously with his mouth gaping. Silence fell on the entire range. No one anticipated this result. No one could believe that an effortless shot made by Hans and using an 11.0 practice bout could carry such miraculous power. Hansen walked to Jing Jia, patted him on the shoulder and said, Jing Jia, if you want to learn the real spinning arrow, come find me when you have time. I'll teach you. Then Hansen took down the practice arrow on Jing Jia's chest and put it back in the quiver. Putting the bow back on the rack, Hansen left the range. Jing Jia watched Hansen leave and sat there like death. The genius is the genius. This is what spinning arrow really looks like. I know it was not that easy to mimic the genius. It seems Jing Jia just learned some tricks and did not master the skill. Awesome. Hansen never took Jing Jia seriously. He did so well with just an 11.0 practice bow. Imagine what he can do if he had picked a 16.01. Impressive. The spinning force of the arrow is what beat Jing Ji Wu. How did he do it? Using a weak bow to make such a strong shot. And the arrow seemed to become faster and faster after it clashed with other arrows. It took Jing Ji a long while before he recovered from shock. Watching Hansen walking away, Jing Ji suddenly smiled wryly with complex feelings. He suddenly discovered how ridiculous his schemes were. He had always believed that Hansen was afraid of accepting his challenge and losing to him. But after seeing what Hansen could do with that arrow, he suddenly understood that Hansen never took him seriously, which was the only reason why Hansen did not accept his challenge in the first place. A casual shot from an ordinary bow had such an unbelievable effect. 
He deserves to be the one who beat my brother. Jing Jia got back on his feet and did not feel upset. Instead, he was burning with a passion that he had never felt before. As the prodigy in his family, he had the gift like nobody else. He did not need to have a passion because he had never met a deserving opponent. However, Hansen made him feel that it was not blood that flew in his body, but fire. Beat him. That was all Jing Jia could think of. Hansen went back to his dorm and said goodbye to his roommates before he teleported to God's sanctuary alone. Beating Jing Jia was miraculous in other people's eyes, but for Hansen, who just wanted to teach the boy a lesson, it was nothing. Inspired by the spinning spear, the arrow shot by Hansen generated a centripetal force, drawing all the arrows in. Using the combination of Yin and Yang forces, Hansen was also able to borrow the speed of other arrows. The ten clashes did not affect Hansen's arrow, but empowered it, making it ten times stronger than when it left the string. So, Jing Jia was hit before he could even realize what had happened. In addition, Jing Jia had no way to foresee such an incredible outcome, so he was not prepared at all. Hansen thought what he had done was no challenge at all. Among the unevolved, no one could hold a candle to Hansen any longer. The only match he had left in First God's Sanctuary was a super creature. Hansen did not care about all that himself, but in Blackhawk, he was revered as a hero. The students in freshman and sophomore years only knew Hansen previously from the school's history, but Hansen's performance at the duel brought him back under the spotlight. The Emperor returned with his incredible archery skills. Blackhawk was still his empire. Why didn't he participate in any games recently? If he did, Blackhawk could have won a lot of championships. With his archery skills, if he were there, even the Alliance Central Military Academy would lose without a doubt. Not just archery. He is peerless in black and white boxing and Warframe as well. He even gained his nickname Emperor from participating in a black and white boxing game, where he gave Saint Germain zero point. You know Saint Germain even had Nail and Ching Nua on their team at the time. Seriously? Why would I lie about that? You can still find the video of the game online. Watch it for yourself. If you think I exaggerated, you can have my virginity. Han Sen's name once again became the topic of conversations in Blackhawk. Many students found Hansen's old videos and became even more impressed by him. Chapter 314, Mushu. Once again, Hansen entered the Dark Swamp. Last time it took him half a month to travel from Glory Shelter back to Steel Armor Shelter by way of Dark Swamp. Last time, he only had the mutant three-eyed beast as his mount and needed to fly on his own over Dark Swamp. This time, he could just use Meowth all the way as the mount, and no mutant creature could stop it. Hansen tried to kill as few creatures as possible. Except for sacred Geno points, he did not need anything. The Golden Rock Worm King was still recovering from his enormous feast in the nest. So Hansen did not bother to hunt. With Meowth's speed, almost no creatures could catch up with them. However, Meowth was not a real mount. Although it was fast, the ride was not a comfortable one. Hansen took the chance to practice the clinging technique in Panorama. He attached his entire body to the back of Meowth and moved up and down as Meowth ran. The key to the clinging technique was following the opponent's force. Although it was the same kind of techniques as Diversion, they differed a lot in practice. When using Diversion, the goal was to offset the opponent's force. However, the goal of using the clinging technique was to integrate oneself with one's opponent, so the opponent could not exert his force. As Hansen felt Meowth's movement under him, he focused himself on moving along with Meowth and felt less and less turbulence. As the Encyclopedia of the Saint Hall, Panorama included all sorts of fundamental methods of using one's strength. Many of those methods could also be applied in the daily life. In order to perfect himself, Hansen was always practicing the methods, even when he rested. Although it was impossible for him to reach perfection, he was pushing himself closer and closer to his full potentials. The stronger he became, the more likely it was for him to kill super creatures. In fact, the essence of martial arts was to push one's limits. The status above Evolver was named Surpasser, which meant the person had surpassed the limits of human body. A Surpasser could even crash an aircraft with bare hands. As Meowth galloped, Hansen suddenly found a creature that looked like a centipede rolling over in a swamp ahead of him. Despite its resemblance to a centipede, the creature was about 30 feet long, its shell gleaming with a dark purple shimmer. 
Its body was as thick as a walk and its feet as sharp as sickles. The dark purple centipede wound itself around a buffalo-like creature, its sharp feet digging into the buffalo, which was about to bleed to death. It seems that the centipede should be a sacred blood creature. How lucky. Although it is a large creature, I don't believe it has too much meat in the body, which should provide some geno points for me. Hansen was excited that he saw the sacred blood creature just when he entered Dark Swamp. As the huge centipede was trying to strangle the buffalo, Hansen took out the diamond sword and jumped from the back of Meowth. With one slash, he cut the centipede together with the buffalo. The centipede was cut into pieces because it was winding on the buffalo. When each piece fell on the ground, it was still twitching and quieted down after a while. Sacred blood creature Mushu killed. No beast soul gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. Mutant creature swamp buffalo killed. No beast soul gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 mutant geno points randomly. Although no beast soul is gained, Hansen was excited that he was able to kill a sacred blood creature with only one strike. He summoned Golden Rock Worm King to eat the Swamp Buffalo. Obviously, the Worm King was more interested in the meat of Mushu. In addition, its appetite did not seem to be as good as before, so it left half of the buffalo meat untouched. Hansen found a clean pool to wash the Mushu's carcass and peeled its shell. Although the Mushu looked ugly, its meat was juicy and rich. Putting it over fire, Hansen immediately smelled an alluring fragrance. Hansen summoned the Holy Angel. She stared at the meat barbecue with a desiring look. It still needs a while, said Hansen, patted the Holy Angel on her head. Holy Angel did not speak, her eyes fixed on the barbecue, which was probably all she could see at this point. Without Hansen's order, she could not move and had to wait patiently next to the fire. Hansen was amused. This little girl only ate sacred blood meat. Even a mutant meat could not interest her at all. Hansen did not want to spare sacred blood meat before, while he did not care that much recently. He was about to max out on his sacred geno points, but collecting super geno points would take him a long time. During that period of time, he could do some casual hunting and his sacred geno points would be filled very fast. So, every chance he got, Hansen would let the holy angel eat some sacred blood meat. If she could evolve like Meowth did, she would become a super beast soul. At that time, he did not even to move a finger and could let her do all the fighting for him. When the barbecue was ready, the holy angel started to gobble the sacred blood meat at Hans since command. A large piece of meat disappeared momentarily. The appetite of a sacred blood pet was unimaginable. Hansen only had one piece when the holy angel had already swallowed a dozen, her stomach still flat. Hansen let the holy angel eat a better half of the mushu meat and saved a small part for the road. The part that Hansen had eaten gave him another sacred geno point. Hansen now had 79 sacred geno points, and it will not be long before he maxed out. Chapter 315 Tornado Wolf The second day he spent in Dark Swamp, Hansen saw from afar that an island was floating in the sky. He was suddenly thrilled and thought, there is a mystery island in Dark Swamp. A mystery island meant a sacred blood beast soul. In the past, Hansen needed a sacred blood ghost butterfly boomerang to kill the holy angel, but now he no longer needed that. In the entire first god sanctuary, there was hardly any sacred blood creature that he could not kill. Dark Swamp was remote and dangerous, it is not very likely that someone happened to be here. Therefore, Hansen believed he would not have a lot of competitors. Having summoned his sacred blood wings, Hansen flew toward the mystery island. The strong wind could not stop him at all. This time, Hansen only used the wings of the purple feathered dragon. He did not look exactly like Dollar, but he did not mind either. No one had seen the wings without the black beetle armor. In addition, all those who had seen these sacred blood wings had evolved, including Son of Heaven. When Hansen landed on the Mystery Island, he frowned as he heard noises of a combat. Someone still beat him to the Mystery Island in Dark Swamp. Hansen saw that it was a man and woman fighting a giant wolf with silver fur. Hansen thought the wolf must be the sacred blood creature on the Mystery Island. Hansen could not tell who the man and woman were. It seemed that they were not from Steel Armor Shelter. Maybe they are from Glory Shelter. Steel Armor Shelter and Glory Shelter are the closest to Dark Swamp, Hansen guessed. Both the man and woman had a fabulous set of beast souls. They not only had sacred blood wings, even their weapons and armor were sacred blood beast souls. 
In addition, the two of them had both shape-shifted with sacred blood humanoid beast souls. The level of the beast souls they used were shocking even to Han Sr. However, with their luxurious beast souls, they were not able to beat the Silver Wolf. The Silver Wolf was so fast that when it ran, it became a blur. Hansen could tell that the Silver Wolf was a huge threat to the man and woman. After watching for a while, Hansen smiled and did not hurry to go over. Standing afar, he decided to watch them fight. At this point, he was able to tell that the man and woman were not the wolf's match. He had no intention to fight with them and wanted to kill the wolf after they retreated. It looks like Lady Luck is still on my side, thought Han Sr. Indeed, a man and woman found it was more and more difficult to parry with the wolf. They also seemed to have noticed Han Sen and did not want to fight anymore. Fighting while retreating, the man and woman approached Han Sr. Friend, I am Ma Ming Jun from Glory Shelter Gang. How about we work together to strike down this sacred blood creature? exclaimed the man when he approached Han Sr. If we work together, Hole gets to keep the meat and be soul? Hansen asked. Whoever makes the fatal strike gets to keep them. Ma Ming Jun was 150 feet from Han Sr. All right. Hansen smiled and joined the two. The spinning spear and the diamond sword were both kept in Hansen's backpack. Of course, Hansen will not use them. He summoned the three-blade harpoon and threw himself at the silver wolf. Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei exchanged a look and quickly joined Han Senator. They did not expect Hansen to be so decisive and were suddenly a bit scared that Hansen might snatch the beast soul. With Hansen on the team, Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei suddenly felt less pressured. They were both shocked by how well Hansen could fight. Since they did not know him, they thought that Hansen probably was not from Glory's shelter, otherwise they would have heard about him. The two did not dare to slack for fear that Hansen might kill the Silver Wolf first. In fact, Hansen did not use what he got. Otherwise, the Silver Wolf would be killed in the first round. Hansen was trying to practice 13 slashes on the Silver Wolf. Since he learned 13 slashes, Hansen did not have too many opportunities to use it because he could hardly find any deserving opponent. By practicing it on the Wolf, Hansen was trying to refresh his memory. However, one thing was for sure, the Silver Wolf was his, and Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei had no chance at all. Although the two of them had tried very hard to kill the Silver Wolf before Han Sen, Han Sen was the one took the wolf's life with 13 slashes. Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei were dazed. They had decided when to make the fatal attack, but did not foresee Han Sen's sudden move, which beheaded the Silver Wolf instantaneously before they had a chance to use their trump card. Sacred Blood Creature Tornado Wolf Killed Beast Soul of Tornado Wolf Gained Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. Hansen took a look at the Tornado Wolf Beast Soul and discovered it to be a Beast Soul Mount. Hansen was pleased as he eventually gained his first Sacred Blood Mount. Meowth was not a mount per se, because despite its speed, riding on that was a terrible experience. Thank you, Hansen said and went to pick up the Tornado Wolf's body. One second. Ma Ming Jun suddenly stopped Han Sr. Are you going back on your words? Hansen asked calmly, without getting upset. Friend, we don't mean to do that. We just wanted to ask whether you were willing to sell the meat and be soul? Ma Ming Jun asked Han Sr. No. Hansen rejected Ma Ming Jun without a second thought. He still needed some sacred geno points himself. Even if he did not, his holy angel needed it. Friend, if you are willing to sell, we can make you a very generous offer. Ma Ming Jun exchanged a look with Su Xin Mei and said to Han Sr. I'm not interested in cash, but if you have a sacred blood beast soul from Second God Sanctuary, I could consider a swap, said Hansen quietly. From his last cooperation with Lin Bei Feng, Hansen earned a cut of 700 million. Plus the mutant beast souls he gained from Su Ruyin and the Nest, Hansen was quite a rich man at this point. He had used some connections to buy a few mutant beast souls in Second God Sanctuary for his mom to use, which were a great help to Luo Sulan. However, a sacred blood beast soul from Second God Sanctuary was so rare that Hansen had found no chance to purchase any. After all, he had not entered Second God Sanctuary himself. Chapter 316 Feeding My Pet That does not even make sense. We do not have sacred blood beast souls from Second God Sanctuary. Even if we do, it is impossible that we exchange them for something in First God Sanctuary," said Ma Ming Jun with his brows knitted. 
The sacred blood beast souls in second god sanctuary were much harder to come by than those in first god sanctuary, and thus much more valuable. However, an unevolved person could not receive any beast soul from second god sanctuary. If Han Sin was to purchase a beast soul from second god sanctuary for his mother, his mother would have to receive the beast soul from the other party directly. Otherwise, a primitive beast soul from second god sanctuary would easily beat most sacred blood beast soul from first god sanctuary. Because the beast souls from a higher phase could not enter a lower one, the sacred blood beast souls of first god sanctuary were still very valuable. However, using a sacred blood beast soul of first god sanctuary to exchange for one in second god sanctuary was still out of the question. Forget about it then. Hanston was very casual about the deal. Since Ma Ming Jun was from Glory Gang, it was very likely that his gang was like Steel Armor Gang and had military affiliations, which was the only reason that Hansen even considered a deal with them. Ma Ming Jun and Su Xinmei whispered to each other, and then Su Xinmei said to Hansen, who had already put the Silver Wolf on his back, What is your name? Are you from Steel Armor Shelter? Yes, replied Hansen and quickly left Mystery Island with the Silver Wolf's body. Sushime bristled, should we just let him go like this? We had fought the sacred blood creature for a long time, and he basically took advantage of us. Ma Ming Jun shook his head and said, this person was using the secret skill of Ares Martial Hall. Not a lot of students could use the skill. He should be a very important person in the Martial Hall. After Hansen returned to the ground, he summoned Meowth and put Tornado Wolf's body on its back. They traveled a long way to find a clean lake and Hans and made a barbecue out of the wolf. The tornado wolf was the same size as a bull. Hansen could not finish it himself, so he summoned Holy Angel to join him. It was too heavy for him to travel with anyway. Holy Angel had been in the great mood these two days as she was fed first the Mushu and then the tornado wolf. She became so excited that her eyes were sparkling. The tornado wolf had a lot more meat than the Mushu. Even with her shocking appetite, Holy Angel could not finish it in a short amount of time. It took Han Sin and her three days to finish the entire Tornado Wolf. As for the bones and inner organs, Han Sin fed them all to the Worm King. The Worm King was exhilarated. It was never fed sacred blood meat before, and was happy to taste some bones and gut. Han Sin gained another sacred Geno point from the Tornado Wolf and now had 80 sacred Geno points. Soon, they had traveled across Dark Swamp. Hansen made a fire at mealtime and decided to heat up some of the mushu meat he preserved. Since it was not a lot, he did not summon the two pets. Just as he started to eat, he saw two persons arriving on their mounts, who turned out to be Ma Ming Jun and Su Xinmei. Hansen was not surprised. He was always cooking these days and it was natural for them to catch up with him. Ma Ming Jun and Su Xinmei were surprised to see Han Senator since Hansen was in steel armor shelter they did not understand why he would be traveling to Glory Shelter. What a coincidence. Good to see you again. Can we use your fire to cook? Asked Ma Ming Jun. Help yourself. Hansen did not mind and continued to eat his barbecue. Ma Ming Jun and Su Xinmei regarded Hansen, puzzled. It was easy to tell that the meat Hansen was eating did not come from the Silver Wolf. Next to Hansen, there was no large parcels either, which was strange. The Silver Wolf was as big as a bull. It had only been a couple of days since they parted, so it would be amazing if Hansen could finish one-fifth of the meat, let alone the entire wolf. However, to their shock, the silver wolf had disappeared. I am the head of the Glory Gang, Ma Ming Jun. This is my girlfriend, Su Xinmei. How shall we call you? As Ma Ming Jun started cooking, he started to make small talks with Han Sr. Hansen, a nobody in steel armor shelter, replied Hansen casually. Ma Ming Jun did not know much about Steel Armor Shelter. He thought about what he knew and said, Dollar from Steel Armor Shelter is such an impressive figure. It is a shame that the only participated in one contest for the Chosen and did not even compete in the last round. Do you know him? Everyone knows him in Steel Armor Shelter. However, he does not know me, said Hansen with a smile. Where did that Silver Wolf go? You couldn't have finished that in these two days, could you? After chatting for a while, Ma Ming Jun voiced his doubt. I fed it to my pet, said Hansen indifferently. Ahem. Ma Ming Jun choked on the water he just drank. It was the first time for him to hear someone would feed sacred blood meat to a pet. Su Xinmei looked at Hansen incredulously and asked, You fed sacred blood meat to your pet? What's wrong with that? Asked Hans Sr. 
Ma Ming Jun quickly said, since Brother Han would use sacred blood meat on his pet, this pet must be extraordinary. Can we have the honor to see it? Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei did not believe someone would do such a thing. However, the silver wolf did disappear, and it was impossible for Han Sin to have finished that on his own. It seemed feeding his pet was a plausible explanation. However, what a pet it must be for someone to be willing to feed it sacred blood meat. Even if Ma Ming Jun had a sacred blood pet, he would not spare any sacred blood meat to feed it. It's just a pet, nothing special about it, said Hansen, smiling. We are so curious to know what kind of pet it is to deserve sacred blood meat. Su Xin Mei still did not believe that Hansen actually did it. That's okay, but my pet has an appearance fee of a mutant beast soul. If you could afford it, I could show it to you as you wish, said Hansen arrogantly. Chapter 317 No Need to Know Me Sushime thought the notion of appearance fee was ridiculous, but seeing Han Sin's arrogant look, she became worked up and said, A mutant beast soul? Here it is. Summon your pet. I would like to see what kind of pet deserves to be fed sacred blood mate. Sushime transferred a mutant beast soul to Han Sin, which was nothing to her. Seeing the mutant weapon transferred to himself, Han Sin smiled. Since they are willing to pay, I will show it to them. Han Sin summoned the Golden Rock Worm King whose huge body appeared on the grassland, looking like a golden armored vehicle. Both Ma Ming Jun and Su Shime were shocked. They had never seen such a large pet before. Brother Han, has your pet transformed already? It must be a sacred blood pet, said Ma Ming Jun in surprise. A sacred blood pet indeed. But it has not transformed, said Hansen quietly. Su Shime remained silent, while Ma Ming Jun had complex feelings. Seeing the Golden Rock Worm King, the puzzle was solved. However, the fact that Hansen would feed his pet sacred blood meat shook them. Hansen was the only person they had seen that fed his pet with sacred blood meat. Brother Han, are you going to steal armor shelter? Ma Ming Jun started the conversation again. I heard people had spotted a sacred blood turtle some time ago and want to have a look. Hansen did not hide the fact. So you have come for the sacred blood turtle. That's easy. It had entered Copper Mountains which we are familiar with. How about we guide your way? Ma Ming Jun suggested, smiling. Ma Ming Jun believed it was useful to make a powerful friend who could travel between shelters and feed sacred blood meat to his pet. Hansen liked the idea. Although he had done his research on the Skynet about the location of Copper Mountains, the mountains were huge and it would not be easy for him to locate the turtle. With someone leading the way, he could save a lot of trouble. In addition, Hansen did not really worry that Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei might harm him. In the entire First God Sanctuary, barely anyone could injure him. Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei accompanied Hansen to Copper Mountains, saving Hansen a lot of time. Seeing the tornado wolf Hansen was riding on, Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei felt a bit upset. However, they were not able to kill the tornado wolf in the beginning and would not have been able to fetch more people to help them in any case since they did not have extra sacred blood wings. In two days, the three arrived at Copper Mountains. The body of the mountains had a burgundy tint, which made the stones look like copper. There was little plantation on these mountains, so it was easy to spot someone in the mountains. However, with the peaks rising one of over another, it was hard to find the turtle even though Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei saw which direction it went. Either way, having them as guide was much better than figuring out the direction alone. Hansen followed Ma Ming Jun and Su Xin Mei deeper into the mountains. After less than a day, they saw a group of eight people who had noticed them as well, waving at them. Very soon, the group came over. Among them, a guy of Hansen's age greeted Ma Ming Jun. Mr. Ma, how come you are also in Copper Mountains? Are you also interested in that sacred blood turtle? Although the guy was smiling, he did not sound like he was joking around. You were kidding, Mr. Zhao. We glory gang suffered greatly last time. How do I dare to take the risk again? Just taking a friend to look at it, said Ma Ming Jun. Zhao Guqing's gaze fell upon Han Senator he asked with a smile. I don't believe I have met this friend before. Just a stranger. No need to know me, said Han Sen and bypassed the group of people, riding the tornado wolf. Mr. Ma, thank you for all your help. I think this is where we should part ways, Han Sen turned and said to Ma Ming Jun, then continued to travel. Anyone could tell that Zhao Guqing clearly had an invested interest in the sacred blood turtle. Since Hansen also came for the turtle, they were competitors and Hansen did not want to waste time on small talks. For Hansen, 
His time is so precious, and Zhao Guqing did not even deserve to be his opponent. The other people in Zhao Guqing's group bristled and wanted to stop Han Sen, while Zhao Guqing stopped them. He stared at Han Sen riding away on the tornado wolf, turned back to look at Ma Ming Jun and asked, Mr. Ma, your friend is quite full of himself. I wonder where he is from. Looking at Han Sen who had left, Ma Ming Jun did not say anything. Although he wanted to make friends with Han Sen, but it will not make sense for him to offend Zhao Guqing either. Ma Ming Jun hesitated and told Zhao Guqing how he met Han Senator Glory Gang and Zhao Guqing had constant collaborations, and Zhao Guqing also provided Glory Gang with equipment including Z Steel weapons. Ma Ming Jun simply could not afford to displease Zhao Guqing for an irrelevant person. A nobody from another shelter. How did he dare to talk to us like that? He probably did not plan to be alive for long, sneered Lu Heidre who was standing behind Zhao Guqing. Zhao Guqing said, if he only wanted to look at the turtle, that's fine. However, if he tries anything, he will not be far from death. After inquiring about the details of Han Sen's situation, Zhao Guqing fared Ma Ming Jun well and continued to look for the sacred blood turtle. Are they really trying to kill Han Sen? Asked Su Shime with her brows knitted. You know them well? They're a bunch of outlaws who made their fortune through smuggling. If Han Sen notices it earlier, maybe he could live. Otherwise, it's hard to say, said Ma Ming Jun with a wry smile. Ma Ming Jun knew that Han Sen fought well, but the group of people were all ruthless and had high Geno point counts. Even if Han Sen had already maxed out on his sacred Geno points, he might still be defeated by this group. Chapter 318 The favor is to let you live. There were a variety of creatures in Copper Mountains, while Han Sen was in no mood to hunt. Most of the creatures were ordinary and primitive ones. Occasionally, there were several mutant creatures, but they were all too large in body size for Han Sen to consider. The Tornado Wolf had an amazing speed. Han Sen had not quite seen any mount like it. Almost no creatures could catch up with the wolf. According to what Ma Ming Jun had told him, Han Sen rode the Tornado Wolf and searched around. Maybe it was good luck, or maybe it was how fast the Tornado Wolf was. Han Sen found the legendary turtle after one day. The turtle was too big for anyone to ignore. It was a black turtle as large as a car, climbing on the copper-colored mountain. Although the slope was steep, the black turtle was climbing at a high speed with all four feet. Hansen did not hurry over, but decided to observe it. The turtle has a black shell and dark green neck and limbs. With a closer look, there were burgundy patterns on the dark shell, which were hardly noticeable. On the turtle's head, there were a pair of ram's horns, and its limbs were covered with dark green scales. After a while, the turtle was about to reach the mountaintop. Oddly, despite that the Copper Mountains barely had any plantation, a lush fruit tree was growing on the top of that mountain. The fruit tree was about 15 feet tall and had many white flowers. Some flowers had already faded, and fruits as red as rubies were growing. When the turtle reached the tree, it managed to stand on its hind legs and put its forelegs on the tree trunk. Stretching its neck, it tried to bite the fruits. Is it because it wants to eat the red fruits that it came out from the ocean? Hansen was dumbstruck. During the compulsory education, Hansen had learned that the plants in God's sanctuary should not be eaten, especially the fruits and roots. Maybe it was because of the difference between human genes and the creature genes. Eating plants from God's sanctuary might have more harm than benefits on one's body. There were edible plants as well, but one must be an expert in the area to tell. In this era, hardly anyone would try the plants for themselves. Since scientific testing did not work in God's sanctuary, normally no one would eat the plants in God's sanctuary. Last time when Su Ruyin and people from Green Shelter were trapped on the Wind End Island, they had tried a lot of times before finding the edible plants and fungus. The turtle could eat these fruits, but it did not mean the fruits were safe for human. The turtle was gobbling away, sometimes swallowing the leaves and white flowers together with the fruits. Very soon, all the fruits were gone. The turtle smacked its mouth, looking like it wanted more. Then it turned slowly and went down the mountain. As Hansen was still deciding if he should test whether the turtle was a super creature, he suddenly heard hoof beat from afar. Hansen turned and saw Zhao Guqing leading his group in this direction. Seeing Hansen and the turtle, Zhao Guqing's face became grim. The group of people rode to Hansen and hemmed him in. Sitting on the back of a giant tiger, Zhao Guqing said coldly to Hansen, Do you want to live or die? What if I want to die? And what if I want to live? 
asked Hansen calmly. It is easy for you to die. We can kill you right here, Zhao Guqing said and scoffed. If you want to live, you need to let us lock you down and kick you out of the Copper Mountains. Hansen was not even upset, because these people did not deserve any of his emotions. He looked at Zhao Guqing and smiled. Don't you think you're being ungrateful to someone who had done you a favor? Boy, what are you talking about? When have you ever done us a favor? If you want to, you can try licking our shoes, Lu Heijia bristled, pointing at Han Sr. Hansen did not even deign to reply him. He continued in a quiet tone. Don't you know what the favor is? What? Zhao Guqing frowned and was alarmed by Han Sr. Hansen was too calm. It looked like he did not even fear them. Zhao Guqing threw a look at someone next to him. Two persons immediately searched around, but found no ambush except for Hansen himself. Hansen sighed and said, the favor is to not kill you. I haven't killed you yet, which is a huge favor. Instead of considering how to repay me, you are trying to harm me. If you are not ungrateful, what are you? Damn it. The group of people raged and threw themselves at Hansen with long weapons in their hands. Although Zhao Guqing remained skeptical, there was indeed no one but Hansen himself. Without thinking any further, Zhao Guqing summoned the spear and stabbed it at Han Sr. Seeing the weapons coming at him, Hansen reached back and drew the spinning spear from his backpack. With a sweep, the spear flicked away all the incoming weapons, breaking those that were weaker than sacred blood. Although Zhao Guqing and Lu Heijia's weapons were not broken, they could barely hold their weapons, because their hands were numb and bleeding. Everyone was dumbstruck, unable to believe that the person was able to parry with all of them with just a spear. Regarding the figure sitting on top of the silver wolf, they were all frightened. Hansen was in no mood to appreciate their looks. He quickly stabbed the spinning spear at one person among them. Chapter 319 Spear is out The person quickly summoned a heavy steel shield, holding it up to Hansen's spear. A shield was the biggest enemy of a spear and this shield was particularly huge and heavy. Even a sacred blood weapon could hardly penetrate it. The person had a malicious look in his eyes. Apparently, he wanted to use the shield to smash Hansen's spear. Hansen smiled and did not stop. His spear touched the steel shield. That person was glad in the beginning, but suddenly felt an unimaginable force. Crack! The long spear was like a drill head, penetrating the steel shield with a strong spinning force and driven through the person's chest. The person looked down incredulously at the red spear head in front of his chest. The rest of them were almost scared to death. They knew that the shield was a top-ranking mutant beast soul that even a sacred blood weapon could only leave a deep mark on it. However, Hansen's spear pierced the shield and the person at the same time. Without any pause, Hansen's spear left the person's chest and pointed to another man. Little one, run. Zhao Guqing exclaimed at the man and raised his spear at Hansen, trying to distract Hansen and save the man. Lu Heijia cried out and hacked his axe at Han Senator. The rest of them also summoned their weapons and attacked Han Senior. The man called, Little One, shape shifted into a monkey and jumped away from Hansen's strike. However, Hansen's spear suddenly accelerated and pierced him in the air. And then Hansen still had time to block the incoming weapons. Hansen's movements were so smooth that it was incredible to watch. The favor is not to kill you. Those who were still alive suddenly thought of what Hansen said, but it was too late for their repentance. Hansen was like Apollo. Wherever he struck, lives would be taken, run in different directions. We can't all die here. Zhao Guqing turned and rode away on his mount, sick with terror. Having spotted a lot of strong men in First God Sanctuary, Zhao Guqing had never seen a monster like Han Senator if he had not seen Hansen with his own eyes. Zhao Guqing would not believe that such a person was in First God Sanctuary. Hansen should only be an Evolver. Zhao Guqing regretted so much his decision to provoke Han Senator, however. All he could do at this point was trying to run. He did not even dare to think of revenge. Other people immediately scattered. The outlaws were a bunch of decisive people and would not think twice before they acted. Ah. Screams filled the valley, one after another with hardly any pause in between. Zhao Guqing turned pale, looked back, and saw the guy on the silver wolf holding a black spear had killed four persons already and was about to throw himself at Lu Heijia who was the only one left except for Zhao Guqing. Zhao Guqing was almost scared to death. He did not waste any time and kicked his sacred blood mount. Hansen was like a monster, killing off six persons instantaneously, 
all of whom had distinguished themselves at the risk of life multiple times. Any of the six could parry with the Chosen. However, under that person's spear, they all died in the blink of an eye, even when they were scattering. Ah, Zhao Guqing was shaken by another scream. Since he started running, his sacred blood mount only made it to 30 feet away, while all his seven brothers were killed. Zhao Guqing could not even imagine what a formidable person this must be. Urging the sacred blood mount, Zhao Guqing thought his only hope was that he had a head start. In addition, his mount was a sacred blood beast soul, so it would not be that easy for Han Sen to catch up with him. Just when Zhao Guqing had the idea, he heard Han Sen catching up. Counterintuitively, Zhao Guqing glanced back. With this glance, Zhao Guqing's legs went limp as he saw the silver wolf was narrowing the distance at an incredible speed. In the blink of an eye, the man with a calm look was only 10 feet away. Please. Before Zhao Guqing finished his sentence, Hansen and Tornado Wolf brushed past him, and the black spear run through his head and stuck out from his mouth, silencing Zhao Guqing forever. Without looking at the dead bodies, Hansen followed the turtle on the Tornado Wolf. These people did not deserve any of his attention. It was like killing chickens to him. The favor is not to kill you. However, that group of people failed to understand what Hansen meant. A few days later, someone found the dead bodies in Copper Mountains, which shocked the entire Glory Shelter. The group of people represented a large gang in Glory Shelter. However, all eight of them died in Copper Mountains, each with only one strike, without any exception. It was hard to imagine what kind of gang could have killed them this way. After hearing about the deaths of the group, Ma Mingjun and Su Xinmei quickly went over to take a look. Ma Mingjun suddenly became pale after seeing the bodies. He turned to look at Su Xinmei, who had lost color as well. They all had an idea who might have killed Zhao Guqing. In Han Sen's backpack, there was obviously a long weapon. And the group of people were going in the same direction as Han Sr. Su Xinmei, do not say a word about this to anyone, said Ma Mingjun slowly, fear growing in his heart. Everyone else thought it must be a gang that killed Zhao Guqing's group. However, Ma Mingjun knew it was Han Sen alone. Thinking of what might have happened, he felt a shiver down his spine. Sushime nodded and was too shocked to speak. She was also glad that she did not try anything stupid with Han Sen when they were on the Mystery Island. Chapter 320 Turtle In Copper Mountains, Han Sen was chasing the turtle. Feeding on the roots or fruits of certain plants, the turtle continued its way in Copper Mountains. Sometimes, where there were no plants at all, the turtle still managed to dig out some mushroom-like stuff to eat. Hansen became more and more shocked. Most creatures did not need to eat, while those that did eat were always extraordinary. Among all the creatures that Hansen had seen, the most extraordinary one must be Golden Growler, and the second would be the turtle. In a way, the turtle was even more odd. The Golden Growler would only feed on creatures of other species. However, the turtle would find plants to eat in the mountains, and it was obviously selective about what to eat. Following the turtle into a valley, Hansen decided it was time to test whether the turtle was a super creature. There was only one way into the valley. Hansen took back the tornado wolf and put on the black beetle armor. He then drew the diamond sword and summoned devil sword to strengthen it. Hansen also summoned the flame lieutenant, which floated next to Hansen and added a red tint to all Hansen's beast souls. She shifting into the bloody slayer, Hansen used heresy mantra and turned his heart into a strong engine, pumping blood fast and fierce. This was the best Hansen could do at this point. Facing a turtle that was possibly a super creature, Hansen did not dare to slack a little bit. Even a newborn golden growler could fight him, let alone an adult super creature. Holding his sword with both hands, Hansen rushed to the turtle. The turtle was vigilant and had noticed Hansen a long time ago. It suddenly turned to him, with its emerald-like eyes fixed on him. Roar! Hansen made a slash with the diamond sword in an incredible speed. This was the best Hansen could do so far. Even if Qin Xin was here, she would not be able to parry this strike. However, halfway through Han Sen's attack, the turtle had suddenly stretched out its neck like a dragon left its lair. Instantaneously, the mouth of the turtle bit at the diamond sword. Hansen lost his color and tried to draw the diamond sword back. However, he could not move the sword either way. The mouth of the turtle was like a wrench, holding the diamond sword in place. The next second, Hansen heard a crack. The diamond sword that could match any sacred blood beast soul weapon 
with the enhancement from both the Devil Sword and Flame Lieutenant, was crushed under the turtle's bite. To Hansen's shock, the turtle started to chew on the broken sword and swallowed it. Super creature. It is definitely a super creature. Hansen was dumbstruck and quickly turned to run. This creature F asterisk hashtag king treated a sacred blood gear like candy. How could Hansen ever beat that? The turtle suddenly moved its four legs as if it was stepping on wheels, rushing toward Hansen fiercely. Its speed was even faster than Tornado Wolf. Damn it! Who said the turtle was slow? Seeing the turtle was almost behind him, Hansen believed if the turtle was going to make another bite, Hansen could not dodge even with Spartacle. Hansen threw the remaining diamond sword at the turtle, spread his wings, and quickly flew to the sky. The turtle quickly caught the incoming broken sword with its mouth, chewed on it, and then swallowed the pieces. Regarding Hansen who had flown away for a few minutes, the turtle then slowly turned back to the valley to look for food. Flying in the sky, Hansen was relieved to see the turtle leaving. Then he discovered that he was covered in cold sweat. Fortunately, the turtle bit the diamond sword instead of his body the first time, otherwise he would be broken in half even with his sacred blood armor. It is definitely a super creature. Hansen watched the turtle in the sky with complex feelings. It was fine that he had lost the diamond sword. However, Hansen saw no hope after witnessing the turtle's strength and speed. A super creature like the turtle was much stronger than the baby golden growler. People from Glory Shelter said the turtle was not very fast. Hansen believed it was because the turtle did not even bother to chase those people down. It seems that my strength is not enough to kill a super creature presently. Even if I used sneak attacks, without enough force to penetrate its body, it would still be useless. There was fire burning in Han Sen's eyes. Although he was not able to kill the turtle, he confirmed that it was a super creature and learned how strong it was. Since Han Sen had already recognized its strength, what was left to do was to figure out how to kill it. Han Sen now knew that unless he had super beast soul armor, any defense was useless in front of the turtle. Two conditions must be satisfied if he wanted to kill the turtle. First, he must be able to use a footwork that allowed him to dodge the formidable bite. Second, he must have enough strength to drive a weapon through its body. Since Hansen did not have a super beast soul weapon, Hansen must focus on enhancing his own force. Otherwise, it would be impossible for him to pierce the turtle's body, even the weakest part, the neck. As for footwork, although Spartacle was quite fast, it was much slower than the turtle's bite. Chapter 321 Overload Hansen thought back on the turtle's bite, which was so fast that it was incredulous. With Hansen's current speed, there was no way that he could dodge a bite like that. He knew it without even trying. As long as he was within the range of attack of the turtle, he would be killed for sure. I need to get faster and stronger. Hansen pondered how he should achieve those two goals. Heresy Mantra could enhance his strength and speed, but Hansen had not completed the third phase longevity yet. Therefore, he had to find another path. Spartacle was out of the question. He had to use a faster footwork. At least the footwork should allow him to dodge the turtle bite. Otherwise, stronger force meant nothing. He had to survive first. Hansen did not go back to Steel Armor Shelter. Hiding the spinning spear and the skeleton's daggers in a remote cave, he teleported back to Blackhawk from Glory's shelter. Years were not be souls and could not be brought out of God's sanctuary. There was simply no way around it. After returning to school, Hansen logged in the Special Squad's platform online. Currently, Hansen had more than 100 points as the head of Special Squad, so it should be easy for him to buy several S-Class Hypergeno Arts. Hansen slowly browsed all the available S-Class Hypergeno Arts wishing to find some that would be helpful to improve his strength and speed. However, it was difficult to find a footwork faster than Spartacle. After all, Spartacle was already a top-notch footwork. Although there were many techniques in Panorama, they were all fundamental skills and could not enhance a certain ability significantly. Panorama focused on slow, long-term improvement of one's fitness. A significant improvement in a short amount of time should be something more like Heresy Mantra. Hansen viewed the available S-Class footwork and did not find a single one that could surpass Spartacle. However, Hansen did not give up but continued to look for it. He decided that he would ask for by Ishan's help if he could not find one. To Hansen's surprise, after checking the footwork all afternoon, he found a super Geno art called Overload which brought him some hope. 
The theory of overload was to make one's body work under extreme conditions that went beyond one's limits. It was to burn one's energy to tap into one's potentials. The more burden one's body could handle, the stronger one's force would be. It was somewhat like an overlock of the processor or graphics cards in ancient computers. It was to reset some computer components so that it ran faster than the manufacturer's specified speed, from 2.0 to 3.0, or even 3.5 or higher. However, by doing that, the burden on one's body would be heavily increased. Undertaking the overload, the body would be inclined to collapse. Technically speaking, overload could increase one's abilities without limit. However, if the body could not take it, one would die from using overload. Fitness was the key in practicing overload. The better the fitness, the greater the potentials. In addition, one must control the level of the overload, otherwise one's body would be destroyed. Hansen did not have too much time to consider. Overload was the most effective way for him to improve at this time. It was even more direct than heresy mantra. Overload could increase the speed and strength greatly in a very short amount of time. However, Heresy Mantra had no side effects, while Overload was dangerous to practice. With Overload, Hansen did not need to learn another footwork. When he used both Overload and Spartacle, he could probably dodge the turtle bite. Hansen used 30 credits at the Special Squad to purchase Overload, which he was happy about. He was willing to spend on anything that would help him improve himself. The idea of becoming the first Evolver with Super Geno points maxed out made Hansen burn with passion. The Geno solution of Overload would be delivered to Blackhawk the next day, so Hansen downloaded the tutorial of Overload first. Hansen, what are you doing? Shirji Kong saw Hansen in the dorm and patted him on the shoulder. Just looking at the tutorial of some Hyper Geno art, replied Hansen casually. Could you hold on a second and do me a small favor first? Sure, Ji Kong asked in a wheedling tone. What favor? It can't be too time-consuming, said Hansen with a smile. It's not. It would be so easy for you, said Sure, Ji Kong with his arm over Hansen's shoulder. Aren't you a frequent visitor to the Gladiator platform? Yes. What about it? If you want to try it, you could register an account there as well. The registration fee is not high. Hansen did not understand what the favor was. I have become a member. But, you know... I'm not that great a fighter. Sure, Ji Kong stuttered. Then you need to practice more. Didn't you register to practice? Hansen said. It might be a little late for that. That's why I want to ask you a favor. Sure, Ji Kong blushed and told Hansen what happened. Aren't your girlfriend from the Warframe department? When did she change her major to martial arts? Hansen looked Sure, Ji Kong up and down. This hunk was much better at romantic affairs than Han Senator as far as Han Sen knew. Sure Ji Kong had had six different girlfriends already. At this point, Sure Ji Kong's girlfriend was in martial arts department and often went to gladiator with friends. Although Sure Ji Kong had great strength, he could not compare to those who were in martial arts major, which was why he wanted Han Sen to back him up. All right, I intended to go on gladiator anyway, Han Sen agreed. Chapter 322, Cheaters. After the two left the dorm and entered the training hall, Sir Ji Kong asked about Han Sen's ID and picked a holographic device. Han Sen also picked a device and logged in. Han Sen immediately saw a friend invite from Sir Ji Kong, whose ID name was King Spear, which was an okay name, but Han Sen felt a bit promiscuous since it was used by Sir. Sir Ji Kong invited Han Sen into his game room. Next to Sir stood a petite, fine girl along with many students from the martial arts department. The students were excited when they saw Hansen, clearly interested in talking to him. The way Hansen beat Jing Jia a while back was so impressive that all the Blackhawk students were deeply in awe of Han Sr. Sir Ji Kong felt a bit upset. Initially, he wanted to brag about his close relationship with Hansen, while his girlfriend and friends simply ignored him after seeing Han Sr. After chatting with the students briefly, Hansen threw a glance at the two were in a combat and asked, Are they also Blackhawk students? Huang Jinxiao is in my department, but I don't know the other person, said Yu Qin Qin, Shi Ji Kong's girlfriend. Hansen, do you think Huang Jinxiao could win? Asked a girl, worried. Hansen pondered and said, It seems that Huang Jinxiao's level is lower than her opponent. It would be it be hard for her to win. Nice, at least someone knows his stuff said a frivolous voice. The Blackhawk students turned to look at the speaker, 
who was a tall and slim young man with a contemptuous look on his face. He seemed too old to be a military school student, so he should be the friend of Huang Jianxiu's opponent. Hansen looked at the person, did not bother to speak, and continued to watch the combat. The result was as Hansen had predicted. Huang Jianxiu lost the combat and returned to the stands with a wry smile. I'm sorry. Wins and losses go hand in hand. You can win next time. Huang Jianxiu's friends tried to comfort her. Huang Jianxiu's opponent ridiculed. It seems that the military school students are not that much different from ordinary people like us. We thought you were stronger than this, given you come from a famous institution. These words made the students bristle. The feverish ones even sent him invites to fight. Great, I happen to have a minute to teach you a lesson and show you that the so-called elites are nothing, said Huang Jianxiu's opponent arrogantly and accepted an invite. The Blackhawk students were cheering their schoolmate up, while the tall, slim young man sneered, a bad fighter is a bad fighter, no matter how loud you cheer, he will lose anyway. It is still hard to say who the loser will be, Yu Chin Chin bristled. Ha ha, I said you will lose, so you will, no matter which one of you come up. The young man laughed brutally. Although the Blackhawk students wanted to talk back, their friend was already at a disadvantage, hence they did not have any grounds for the retort. Very soon, the students lost the fight and returned to the stands with his head down. The tall and slim young men squinted at Yuchin Chin and said, Little girl, am I right? I said you will lose, so you will. You think you're somebody after being admitted by a military school, but in fact, you're just a bunch of stupid kids. This is it. No one is my match here. I should just stop playing. The man who won the fight looked bored. Looking at their hateful faces, the Blackhawk students wanted to challenge them again. Let me do it. Hansen suddenly stopped their challenge and said calmly. He then sent an invite to the winner of the last round. Hansen did not let his schoolmates continue to challenge these two, because he saw clearly that the students could not win. It was not to say that the Blackhawk students were not good, but the two young men were cheating. In Gladiator, one could choose to enter the unevolved section and evolver section regardless of one's status. Normally speaking, evolvers were not interested in entering the unevolved section. However, there were some exceptions, such as these two young men. They were nothing among the evolvers and would lose to basically anybody. However, they pretended to be the unevolved and tried to gain confidence from their unfair victories against the unevolved. Most evolvers would not deign to stoop so low, but these two were smug about it, as if they had become true masters. Although they were on the bottom in the evolver section, they probably had maxed out their mutant geno points before they evolved. Thus, for an unevolved person, they were almost invincible. No matter how good the students were, they could not beat an evolver at this stage, which was why Hansen stopped them. Otherwise, the two scums would be even more elated. Initially, Hansen would not bother to deal with this kind of weak evolvers. However, he would not stand and watch his schoolmates bullied like this. The young man clicked yes and entered the game with Han Sr. Carry on. Genius, carry on. All the students were cheering for Han Sr. Genius, my ass. Every one of you is rubbish in front of us, the tall, slim guy said pretentiously. He did not believe that any of these unevolved military school students could beat them. They were, after all, the evolvers. The least they could do was to bully a few military school students and he thought even less of the genius they mentioned. It would be great to make an example out of this genius. As the countdown ended, Hansen and his opponent entered the arena. The guy pretended to be a master and curled his finger at Han Sr. Come on, use all you got. Don't say I never gave you a chance. Chapter 323, an invite from the queen. Thank you for the chance. Hansen smiled and threw a punch at the young man. The young man looked at Hansen's fist, curled his lips, smiled contemptuously, and countered Han Sin's strike with his fist. With his fitness level as an evolver, he was much stronger than a normal unevolved person. He could bully his opponents as he wanted using his advantage in fitness, the satisfaction of which made him linger in the unevolved section. As long as they did not use those hypergeno arts that only evolvers could practice, there was no way for anyone to tell they were evolvers. People would only think that they were strong unevolved persons. Seeing the two fists were about to clash, the young man was even more excited. Fist against fist, he could break all the bones in his opponent's fingers, and sometimes even the entire arm. As the two fists were about to bump, Hansen turned his fist into a claw, 
twisted the young man's wrist and dislocated it. The young man's arm was twisted back and had to turn his back to Hans Sr. Twisting his arm, Hansen kicked the young man in the knee pits and made him kneel. With one arm controlled by Hansen, the young man could not even stand up, otherwise his entire arm would be wasted. As an evolver, the young man did have some remarkable abilities. He quickly hit back and tried to get rid of Hansen's hand. However, Hansen had improved his grappling skills tremendously since his combat with Sushu. An evolver with a fitness index just above 20 was not comparable to Hansen at all. Hansen released the young man's arm and followed the young man. Putting his arm around the young man's neck, Hansen threw his opponent in the air head down. As his opponent was falling, Hansen's fists hit the young man's body as fast as lightning bolts from the face to the stomach. When the young man was about to touch the ground, Hansen kicked him in the chest with a knee, throwing him into the air again. Sweeping up and down, Hansen's legs became a blur, kicking the young man as if he were a punching sack. Before the young man landed, his health value was burned up. His body exploded in the air, and he was eliminated. His friend, the tall, slim guy became dumbstruck, unable to believe that the young man would be kicked to the point of explosion by a military school student. Even though the students did not know that they were evolvers, he knew very well that it was impossible for his friend to lose. The students started to cheer and welcomed Hansen back to the stands as if they were receiving a hero. Hansen stared at the tall, slim young man and asked, Do you want to fight me as well? No need. No need. The tall and slim guy became pale, he was not even as good as his friend. Since his friend exploded, of course he did not have the nerve to fight Hansen himself. Why? Didn't you enjoy this game very much? Hansen said calmly. Feeling nervous, the tall and slim guy exclaimed, We are out of form today. Doesn't mean we won't win next time. Will you use your revolver's identity to fight next time? Or the unevolved? Hansen asked. Hearing Hansen's words, the students were dazed. Hansen, you're saying that they are evolvers? Sure Ji Kong looked at the two young men incredulously. You are evolvers? All the students were mad at them. Bullying others using false identities was simply contemptible. Who is an evolver? Don't talk crap here. The two young men of course chose to deny being evolvers, otherwise they would be in trouble. Indeed, you have not evolved much, said Hansen casually. The two did not speak anymore and chose to leave Gladiator. Hansen, were they evolvers or not? The students were puzzled. When I went to observe in the evolver section, I have seen them before. But I'm not so sure if they are actually evolvers. Hansen shrugged and made up an excuse. I think they are evolvers, but the scum type. Otherwise, they would not have pretended to be an unevolved person to bully others. Garbage. Shameless. Genius. Your movements were awesome especially the last round of kicks. You need to teach us when you have time. All the students were impressed by Hans Senator, even scum evolvers were evolvers. It was still difficult for an unevolved person to beat them. After fighting the students a few rounds and giving them some suggestion, Hansen entered the evolver section, because he was not the least interested in the unevolved opponents. As soon as possible he did, he received an invite to fight. Hansen thought it was those who had lost to him, but was dumbstruck by the ID name. The ID looked very familiar, but it was not the two persons that he had beaten before. It was a one-word ID, Queen. Hansen had never seen such an ID, but he remembered this name. A while back, Wang Fu Ping Ching had taken him to a restaurant named Queen Restaurant once, which was the property of Aries Marshall Hall. Hansen saw an evolver with the nickname Queen there in the restaurant, who destroyed an Evolver opponent momentarily with incredible skills and power. Is this the same Queen? With some doubt, Hansen clicked yes and entered a fighting scene. Chapter 324 Fighting the Queen Hansen hoped he would see Queen from the Ares Martial Hall again. Although Hansen knew he was not nearly as good as she was, he still looked forward to their fight. After all, they were both fighting in the virtual community and he would not be injured while appreciating her incredible skills. Hansen had seen many impressive evolvers on Gladiator, and some of them could beat him with just two or three strikes. However, no matter how strong they were, they did not leave him shaken like Queen did. During the countdown, Hansen stared into the opposite direction. It's her. Seeing the tall figure, Hansen was excited. Although she was dressed differently than he remembered and used the face blur function of the platform, Hansen immediately recognized her at first glance. 
there were some people in the world that were recognizable by their special air instead of the face or a certain body part. Queen is such a unique person. She was cold, proud and aloof, absolutely indifferent to everything in the world, like a real queen. It was not a disguise or result of training, but a testament to her mental strength. Although Hansen did not know why Queen would invite him to fight, her invite made him jump with joy. To win or lose was not important. Hansen cherished the experience to fight such a strong opponent. The reason that Queen picked Hansen was not because she saw something in him. In fact, Queen did not even knew Hansen existed. No one could make Queen do anything if she doesn't want to, except for one person, President of Ares Marshall Hall, Wang Fu Xiongqin. Because Qin recommended a soldier on warship to Qian Hezhen, Qian Hezhen became interested in the soldier. However, Huang Fu Xiangqing had strict rules about Qian Hezhen's training. If Qian were to fight a student from Ares Martial Hall, that would be fine. But if he were to look for someone from Gladiator, he must get Huang Fu Xiangqing's approval beforehand. After hearing Qian Hezhen's request, Huang Fu Xiangqing did not stop him, but asked Queen to determine whether Hansen was qualified to be Qian Hezhen's opponent. Wang Fu Xiangqing had high hopes for Qian Hezhen and did not want anything to go wrong in his training. Wang Fu Xiangqing did not want Qian Hezhen's opponent to be too strong or too weak. And if Qian Hezhen's opponent was not on the right path, that might affect Qian as well. Wang Fu Xiangqing would not allow that to happen and trusted Queen to make the decision whether Hansen was fit to be Qian Hezhen's opponent. That was why Queen had sent the invite to Han Senator Queen was a frequent visitor to Gladiator so she would occasionally send an invite to Hansen to check if he was online. Although Hansen did not know the story behind the invite, he very much looked forward to the fight with Queen. After the countdown was over, Hansen entered the arena. Without any hesitation, Hansen used heresy mantra to strengthen the functions of his heart, blood, and chi. His fitness level was increased substantially. Without a word, Hansen threw a punch at Queen. He was afraid that if he did not make a strike soon, he might never have an opportunity to do so. Queen was definitely much stronger than most super creatures in First God's Sanctuary. Therefore, Hansen's punch almost carried all his strength and would take most people by surprise with his sneak attack skills. Originally, Hansen thought Queen would fight back fiercely, which was her style. However, Queen simply dodged Hansen's punch and did not fight back. Hansen was dazed. Without much time to think, he threw a second punch. Facing such an opponent, it would be ideal if he could survive more rounds. The punch that cost all his strength only took Queen one step to avoid. None of his skills worked. Hansen decided to use the skeleton's disordered rhythm. He summarized Queen's rhythm and hit her when her defense was down. However, she suddenly changed her rhythm and made his attack end up in vain. Hansen had never met an opponent whole could change her own rhythm as abruptly as this, which surprised him. No matter how good he was at prejudgment, he must base his prediction on his opponent's rhythm. Queen was able to change her rhythm as she wished, which meant it was impossible for Hansen to determine her movement pattern. Any prejudgment was thus pointless. Although Hansen was shocked, he remained calm and tried to use all the methods he knew to attack Queen. Although Hansen did not know why Queen did not fight back at all, he was glad that he had this opportunity to spar with an opponent of this level. Normally speaking, Evolvers of her level would not accept his invite, but this time, Queen even sent him an invite. Hansen did not care about the reason why she did not fight back, as long as he had the chance to practice with her. However, no matter what kind of skills Hansen had used, from sneak attacks to the skeleton skills, from 13 slashes to blade storm, nothing worked on Queen. He could not even touch the corner of her clothes. What was even more scary was that only by dodging Hansen's attacks, Queen managed to force Hansen into a corner. And he did not notice that until it happened. Hansen was dumbstruck. He was the one who was making all the attacks, while Queen managed to force him into a corner simply by avoiding his attacks. He could not imagine how wide the gap was between the two of them. Eventually, when Hansen was forced into the corner, Queen made her first attack. Jumping in the air, she kicked her legs at Hansen's chest. Chapter 325 Kiting Hansen did not have any room to run. Reaching him in a second, Queen's kick was even more horrendous than the turtle bite. Hansen immediately tried to block Queen's incoming leg with both hands, using diversion and clinging technique, hoping that he could borrow Queen's force. But it was useless. 
In order to use diversion, he must understand his opponent's force. To cling to his opponent, he must follow Queen's force. However, Queen's kick was so sharp and fast that Hansen had no time to do either of that. Bang! Her leg kicked on Hansen's hands and then his chest. He felt like his entire body was smashed into pieces. Then his simulated body suddenly disappeared, killed with one strike, and not even in a vital body part. There was only one possibility for the system to make such a judgment. The two parties were too far apart in strength that they were not on the same level. Hansen returned to the waiting area and sent a friend request to Queen. If they could meet again, Hansen wished to fight Queen at a different time. If she would not add him, he had nothing to lose. Unexpectedly, Queen accepted the request and Hansen was delighted to see Queen in his friend list. As he was about to send Queen an invite to fight again, her name became Dark. Obviously, she had left Gladiator. What a shame. But since she has already added me, I believe I will have another chance in the future. Thought Hansen, licking his lips. Queen was much stronger than the super creatures. If he had more chance to practice with her, it would be great for him to prepare himself for the future hunting. Hansen did not bother to think why Queen would fight him. He did not use his real identity to register and even use the face blur function. No one should know who he was, and Queen should not be able to find out. Before Hansen left the platform, he paid to download the video of the combat to his comlink. Hansen decided to study the video and find out how Queen managed to force him into the corner. After leaving Gladiator, Queen dialed a number and made a short call. She reported to Huang Fu Xiangxing her conclusion, which was she believed a soldier on warship was a suitable opponent for Qian Hezhen. Although she beat Hansen with only one strike, Hansen's performance was out of her expectation, which was why Queen agreed to add him. In fact, Hansen was the only person in Queen's friend list. She did not even add any student in Ares Martial Hall. In fact, in Gladiator, Queen never chatted with anyone or added anyone. The reason she agreed to add Hansen was that despite his weak fitness, he had several techniques that were inspiring to her. For example, the way Hansen made his attacks was sneaky enough that she was only able to tell his intention after he approached her. And Hansen obviously had a great understanding of rhythm, which forced her to change her rhythm to cope with his attacks. In addition, Hansen controlled his strength and his body very well, which was rare among people with his fitness level. Maybe it was because Hansen had a similar style to someone she knew, Queen decided to accept Hansen's friend request. After fighting Queen, Hansen did not want to challenge anyone else. He left Gladiator and returned to the dorm to watch the video he downloaded repeatedly. Without a doubt, Queen was a formidable person and a top-notch evolver. Hansen cannot find anything she could have done better. However, this was not Hansen's focus. What impressed Hansen the most was her kiting skills. It was not even a footwork, but kiting. Queen did not even use any footwork intentionally, but the spots he decided to go to when avoiding Hansen's attacks made Hansen feel threatened and unintentionally end up where Queen wanted him to go. That is to say, although Queen did not launch any strikes, she was able to put tremendous pressure and threat on Hansen, so that he would want to run. Therefore, although Hansen was making all the attacks, he ended up in the corner. Another thought made Hansen sweat. Every spot Queen chose to go to was a spot that could threaten Hansen, which meant it was a defect in Hansen's movement. If Hansen had not been through this fight against Queen, Hansen had never thought he'd have so many defects that his opponent could take advantage of. If Queen was his enemy, and their fight was for real, Hansen would have died a million times. Hansen's finding made him feel odd and excited. It was okay that one made mistakes, as long as one knew one's mistakes. In this case, Queen pointed out where he did wrong and made him see what he was blind to. Knowing what he did wrong, Hansen knew how to make improvements. And nothing was better than that. Naturally, Queen did not do that intentionally. All she wanted to do was to force Hansen to use all he got in order to determine whether or not Hansen was fit to be Qian Hezhen's opponent. Even Queen did not expect that Hansen could learn so much from fighting her. Hansen watched the video repeatedly and was more and more impressed by Queen. Her movements looked unintentional, but were always meant for something. It was like playing go with a master. Some stones that seemed pointless in the beginning ended up being the key to success. Those pointless stones were not in fact placed casually, but part of a macro design. Last time Hansen saw a queen in a combat, he saw was how powerful she was. However, being her opponent this time, 
Hansen learned why she was so formidable.